Yay! Hey! Yeah, I threw that together real quickly. That was fun. I dug it. Looks good. You took uh, took my profile picture that I just I took on Saturday. I it like looks, it. You, it's a damn good profile picture. All right. Uh, yeah, so I'm still trying to figure out how how all this shit works. So, you know, I can see comments here. I got the beard laws at 6.30 saying first. First. I got my buddy CT. Let's go. Where, where are we and going? Then him, and then him, right? And then him asking if my internet died again. <laughs> you got better internet than you have before. So I will, well, give, because I will give you that. I ran. So my house is like a thousand square feet, but I literally ran. Uh, an ethernet cable from my router to inside my garage into the meat hole into the meat hole i mean i still need to run it through the attic but i literally just have it hanging on the ceiling and then it coming works. in through the huh it works it does it literally works so it's 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 good times by the way i'm wearing my finley uh murdered out hat tonight as well yep i got my my goo guy on I wore it just for you. I'm really good at reading. I don't believe that's a thing. And I don't run anywhere. You've seen it. I almost died. They had me running from my back patio to my back fence and back. And the guys almost killed me. Well, they shouldn't do that. Well, they didn't know I had asthma. But I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do this. And Oh, I have asthma too. But my backyard is huge. Like The end of my fence is it's far. I, well, I've seen the well. I've seen your backyard on uh, on TikTok. Yeah, it's a huge ass backyard. I can't believe it. I can't wait to for the nice be nice again so I can start mowing. I'm yeah, really you, looking forward to mowing. Uh, have you got a, uh, a riding lawnmower yet? No, I'm not getting a riding lawnmower. I have one of those push mowers, and that's all I'm going to do. You should get that's, one. I don't need a riding lawnmower. And I then like you got a push mower. But then you got to get like those American really tight shorts and then you got to get it to where it has a beer like holder on it and then a flag on the back of it. So you're just. <laughs> What's funny is when we first moved in, we were talking to the neighbors. I'm like, yeah, you're going to see me out in short shorts and, you know, um, Daisy Dukes mowing the yard and shit. He actually gets mad at me that he has not seen me in those Daisy Dukes yet. Well, you better get on it. I know. I just I'm so embarrassed of my legs, especially when it's. But that's the best part, though, is like just not not caring and just doing it. And the New Balance shoes. I use an old pair of Vans that I've turned green. But doing all here's that. The, you got to have a half shirt, or you got to have a mesh like tank top. You know, I was uh, a while back. I was looking at mesh crop tops, yeah, and uh, for no reason, just just for because, and just because, just because why not? Hell yeah, cut off some muscle shirt. I mean. Well, as they say, you have to have muscles if you're going to wear that shirt. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> there is times that I have gone out shirtless if it's super, super. Like when we, this over the summer when we were just blasting with heat, I went oh. out there shirtless and shit, and I was sweating my ass off. It reminded me of living in Arizona. See, I've never been to Arizona, but. Yeah, that was pretty much it. it. That was pretty much like what it's like. Just the humidity is a little bit less, but it was that hot all the time. Dude, I there's no way I could do it. I remember years back when I was a smoker and it was super hot out and it was hard to have a cigarette. Yeah. Like I, I'm glad I don't do that no more. But you know, I got the uh the cold PBR to help keep me uh feeling well, good got, on the summer. I got the, the cold rain ear for me, so the cold vitamin R. The vitamin R, the red dog, the uh, the Ronye, the Ronye, as uh, our good friend uh, Marquitos calls it. So, dude, I don't know what he's going to do when he moves and he doesn't have Rainier over in the East Coast. Well, I told him I'd send him a thirty pack, at least one. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, it's a, it's amazing how he didn't know that thirty packs existed of those around here. Like, he. Yeah, so he asked me about it, and I haven't found, but I went to um, a big chain uh, liquor store, and I found one. And I haven't been able to find him anywhere else except for this, like, specific store. And I'm pretty sure the Winco over by my house has 30 racks. He said that, but I'm like, are you going to get one? And he's like, he's like, I can't find it. I'm like, I've told him where to go, so... But also, I told him I'd send him some just as a 
you know, a going away present. I don't think he's actually going to leave. I think it's just a prank. He's been talking about it for a while. West Coast Look does not laws, suck. The West Coast sucks. Little Miss, I live over on the East Coast in the high part of New York. Yeah, he's he's just a bald bearded guy that lives up in the East Coast. <laughs> I can't believe he shaved his freaking head. Like, what is he doing? He he looks more handsome. You gotta if I you're gonna have a if I you're gonna know. have a beard, if you're gonna have a beard, you have to have a bald head. It just goes hand in hand. I can't. I, I it doesn't fit me. And it I, actually it looks good. Yeah, well, this is usually how short I usually go. I had yeah. to go down to nothing. I can't do what the rest of y'all do. I cannot drop it down to nothing. We don't have well. I don't have a choice because if I grow my hair out, I look like uh, uh, what George Costanza with a beard. <laughs> my hair is just super curly, so I, I can't. I you had that mullet going on for a minute. Which I was did. I tried the good. mullet. I tried the mullet. You know what I did with the hair? I cut that mullet off forever ago. I actually gifted the hair to Jamie for Christmas, but the way I did it because I kept the hair for a while. Uh huh. The way I did it, I uh, I took a Bible and I okay. cut out. Sorry, I cut out a chunk of Bible from page sixty nine to four twenty. <laughs> that was really hard to do, and I shoved my hair in there and just like glued it in, and I did all sorts of crazy stuff, and it was uh, it was ridiculous. So it sat, it sat in here for like pff, three or four months, and I'm surprised you never found it. Wow. Oh wait, that's right. Because I remember I remember you uh you doing it on your TikTok where you hid it in the books, right? No, no, that's I have multiple Bibles and uh-huh. I those those are just stuff that I hid inside uh for my wife <laughs> to find. Um but no, I, I hid it in my garage in pretty much plain sight and it said to Jamie and everything written on it. And she just Never, I, she never saw it. I, I guess I hit it well enough that uh, she didn't look through my personal shit. I guess. Well, I mean, it's your personal stuff. I guess she just doesn't want to look through oh, it. Oh, yeah. Know? You think that she hasn't touched my personal shit before? <laughs> she started going to my underwear drawer and took all my underwear and put her husband's sexy underwear inside of it. That's, I mean, that's pretty, that's still pretty good, though. No, it sucked. Or when she stapled all my socks to the ceiling. I, yeah. I remember that. That was like, yeah. Yes, multiple Bibles. I have multiple Bibles hidden in the house. That's, There's I a mean, story behind it, though. Our, my boss, uh, they bought an old church, and there was a lot of old church stuff left behind, including a bunch of Bibles. He goes, Joe, will you do something with these? He is a he's a faithful person. Like He, he believes in stuff, but he's like, you can cut it out and do something. I was like, oh, you are a genius. He told me straight up, ruin a Bible. I mean... Well, you know, I used to belong to a, a somewhat religion I won't get into. And uh what's it? <laughs> what? I was gonna say, please tell me it's not Scientology. No, 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 no. Another occult like religion. Got it. Uh and uh I basically I have one that was gifted to me from my grandma that I, I will not throw it away. It's it has very sentimental value to me mm. and I just I can't do it, so um yeah no I, so, I understand that too i mean yeah i mean we but have that's, stuff like that yeah but that's the only thing i have of hers like i don't have anything else so it's like having just that that she gifted to me like in like 80 i think it was like 88 89 so i was like a little kid when i got this and it has her handwriting in it and it's it literally i can't really do much with it so it just sits in a box because right you know i don't I, I don't have my own place yet, so it's like having the, you know, can't really do decorate the way I want. So, I mean, but it's okay. I mean, does your roommate suck like that? I mean, uh, uh, uh no, no comment. <laughs> uh, yes and no. <laughs> Got it. Um, he, he, he voted for somebody that, uh, believe that he won we'll just say that much you know you know how i'm one of those people like on online i don't talk about politics and all that good stuff yeah Um, but where i work i work in a very like conservative town oh yeah i know you do 
And, you know, surprisingly, these people are actually really nice, but I love that I can give them shit as well for, like, my differences and their differences. And it's it's hilarious. I actually had these new people come to the bar and ask, you know, my name, and I said Joe, and they laughed a little bit. And they're like, can we call you Brandon? And I just started busting up laughing <laughs> because of the whole let's go Brandon. I was like, yes. Yeah. I mean, they, they they were really nice about it. After, you know, the lady hit her husband because she's like, you don't know who he voted for. Maybe he's one of them. I was like, oh, bitch. <laughs> one of but them. It was, it, was, it was really funny, and we got along just fine. And that's, I mean, it's cool. I'm, I'm able to joke around with a lot of those people. I mean, I have a lot of people that I know that are yeah, different same. opinions. And I can right. still be friends with them. Screw it. Yeah. As long as they're not bat shit. Same. I, I have friends on both sides of the fence, and I also have friends that are right in the middle. So... It yep. works out because my my thing is is a if you're going to have an argument about something either it be religion or it be politics or something like that or even music for example a you better know both sides of 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 it you better know left and right you better not just know one sided because you're going to get oh, oh you went full screen on that one I, I did <laughs> I went crazy it's okay um. And basically, it was, it's one of those things with how I'm talking about is basically, if you're going to tell me one thing, you better understand the other side of it. So, like, don't tell me the sky is blue without actually knowing why the sky is blue. Yeah. That's I, mean, I don't of, know why the sky is blue, but... It's because, well, there's a scientific <laughs> reason behind it. I won't well, I get always... into it because it's a whole... I, I know. I, I remember in eighth grade we had to learn, and my teacher always got pissed at me on, like, the tests and all this stuff. I said the sky was blue because the green the grass is green. Yeah. And she hated me for it. She absolutely hated me for it. But that was always my answer because I didn't, I didn't really care about the whole scientific reason for it. Yeah, anyway, and most people don't. Most people don't. So, And that's why I just – I don't get into politics with a lot of people because – with them, they're only one-sided. They don't want to hear the other side because they don't want to. They, they don't want to know that they're wrong. Mm -hmm. And and opinions and facts are two different things. And someone's opinion about something is going to be completely different than the facts of it. So absolutely. And like I, I like the whole like the saying is, um, like if somebody asks like if I'm doing a, like a live on TikTok or something, and somebody mm -hmm. asks them like we just don't do that here. Yeah. Um. Because it's like, I have my opinions, you have yours. What are we going to do to change it? Exactly. But, but I am willing to fight if somebody's being an asshole. Same. That's, 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 that's one thing and that's another. So you, you say, you know, having the arguments, like even about music. Let me tell you about one of the most bitching arguments about music I ever had. Who is the better band, Corn or Limp Biscuit? Sir, I had a screaming match with somebody over who is a better band, Corn or Limp Biscuit. Okay. Obviously, it's Limp Biscuit. This girl went absolute ape shit screaming about how it's corn. <sighs> what are your opinions on that? Okay, well, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll disagree with you. <gasps> Only, you but listen, listen. I, here's my argument. Here's my argument, though, Okay. With both bands, I love I, I listen to both bands, right? But with with corn, they actually brought a subgenre, and so did Limp Biscuit, into the forefront. I could not attach myself to what Fred Durst was writing about. I could not identify with that. It's the same thing with uh certain like certain rap. I can't identify with that stuff. But I can identify, and this is my opinion, that's why I'm going to say I disagree with it, because of the fact of a lot of the stuff that uh, Jonathan Davis from Korn and a lot of what they were writing about, I can identify with. You think about it, okay? One, I'm one, I, I'm one of ten kids. I'm one of the only one in my family that has a disability, in many quotes, disability. I'm one of the only few people I'm, I'm going to do a handful of jokes and I'm sorry. You're going to hear them. Uh, the thing is, <laughs> the, the thing is it, I can identify more with corn. Now 
if you're going to go chart for chart, unfortunately, Limp Biscuit's going to lose because Corn has a lot more albums, a lot more to uh, uh, top rated uh, songs, and a lot more acclaim than Limp Biscuit does. All Limp Biscuit did was is they they rode off the coattails of having the DJ from House of Pain in their band, and also had an amazing guitar player. John Ono is one of the best uh, trap drummers that they've ha that is out there. Fred Durst is the shittiest frontman. I'm sorry, but he is <laughs> one of the shittiest frontman out there. Now, if we're gonna discuss their comeback, their comeback is one of the best comebacks of the past five years because he he knew exactly what he was doing with the whole dad vibe and doing the whole thing with the TikTok, doing the wig, dressing like a dad. And making it being like dad core and all that stuff. He knows exactly because he's a good businessman. Corn, on the other hand, unfortunately, they're stuck in a genre because they did all the other stuff. They did dubstep, they did the, the new metal stuff, they did the real heavy stuff. They have Ray Lazaro is one of the top and probably the top five drummers of all time. You have uh Monkey and you have Head as one of the coolest like rhythm section as guitar players that don't ever play leads, but they can do some weird shit. You also have Jonathan Davis that can scat while screaming. Now, if you're going to sit there and tell me Lint Biscuit is better than that band. I, I, your, what's your argument for, for Lint Biscuit? Oh my fucking God. I don't even know if I want to do this. <sighs> I'm gonna have a drink for that one. <laughs> I don't even know if I can argue with this, though. Um, That's why they call me right. Stump. I know, because <laughs> I'm stumped. Yeah, that's that's the reason. Yeah, that's, that's the reason. Uh, um, okay. hey, hands down, that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna not gonna go any further with that because I think you just uh, pwned my ass and. Um, I will still say uh, Limp Biscuit's the better band. I mean, at least okay. So here's my issue with uh, with Corn. Okay. Hit, Jonathan Davis is scatting. I I can't stand that shit. That I, I, I can't freaking stand it. The guitars and the drummers amazing. That bass player though, I cannot stand that slapping shit. I, like, I get it's it. So bad. It is so bad. Um, bagpipes. I don't care much for bagpipes. We go back to House of Pain, but you know, I don't care much for the bagpipes. I know Corn has had a bigger, you know, following, and you know, the bigger, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Limp Biscuit put on a hell of a show when I saw them back in like ninety nine, two thousand. Was it Limp Biscuit or was that the? Guitar it was player? no. It was. No, it was full on Limp Biscuit. I never saw West Borland doing his solo stuff. Even when they came back, I did not believe that was West no, Borland. Because I mean, so I'm, I'm saying though, Limp Biscuit as like the show itself. Like I'm saying, West Borland oh, yeah. literally like he, like he the way his stage presence is completely different from the rest of the band. Also, the other argument that I'll have is, um, um, uh, what's uh, now? I just totally forgot his name. Um, the, the singer, he also Fred like Durst. Fred Durst, he also, it, he's not, he's not doing anything original. Now their faith cover is actually a pretty good cover. Their cover of behind blue eyes. That is so left field of them that I was like, okay, I can actually appreciate that because I grew up with, with the who. And so I'm like, that's actually a killer cover. Corn did Pink Floyd, so it's kind of the, you know, but I totally get it with Fieldy with that slap bass thing. But if you think about it as a band in a whole, from Corn to as a whole band, I'm not dissecting each person, but yeah. each, they've done so much more things. Wes Borland, out of, out of, uh, Biscuit is really the only ba uh, band member that has done anything that's insanely different than the Sam, the, the bass player, amazing bass player. He knows what he's doing. Same with John Otto. John Otto is a great trap drummer. He, it, he fits in that pocket. He knows what he's, you know, he knows when to go crazy, when not to go crazy. 
but the dudes in corn it, it it's it, it's almost like two di- it's almost two different painters you know what i mean i can appreciate both but it's almost like the argument of are you a beatles fan or not oh that's 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 a that's a question coming See, up too now if we're going to go that route okay <laughs> I grew up with Led Zeppelin, The Who, The Doors, Pink Floyd. That's the stuff I grew up with on both sides of my parents. I don't like what the Beatles did. I'm not a fan of it, but I can respect it as a musician because I just watched. I don't know if you've watched it, but the uh, they just did the documentary. No, I haven't watched on, it yet, but I, I I I definitely want to. The best and worst part is Yoko Ono. Oh God. Um. Uh, there's a part that actually Paul, he literally says she's going to be the reason this band ends mm-hmm. in the documentary. And it's just like, oh, he knew. He absolutely knew right away that she was the reason the Beatles was going to break up. And because, but but we'll, we'll circle back to that later. Um, and it's crazy with the whole because me and you are about the same age so we kind of grew up with the new metal stuff going from you know the that era i unfortunately i went towards more corn mud vein slipknot more towards that kind of genre i can't i can't stand the rap metal stuff you're you're right over there i I was yeah i'm good see i was really into the whole rap metal stuff because Growing up, I was, you know, I, I was raised on hip hop, obviously Tacoma, just, you know, that much. Um, and so like, I, I get this whole, like, I was introduced to this whole entire genre of just like, I'm getting into metal music. I'm getting into punk rock. I'm getting into all sorts of stuff. And all of a sudden there's a guy rapping to freaking distortion. I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. Like we, I mean, other people have done it before, but like, this was like, he was loud he was obnoxious he screamed about loving ben stiller and i love ben stiller and (laughs) which is fine (laughs) and i don't know there was just something about like they were singing songs i didn't understand but damn i would sing it in front of my mom and she got pissed like i remember i had gotten a three dollar bill uh from a friend but he also gave me like uh, I think he gave me like an ICP CD. Um, he gave me uh, what else? It was like something else. But like at that time, I was really more into what my brothers, my older brothers, were listening to, which was a lot of '90s. Uh, it was a lot of gangster rap from the West Coast, but also a little bit of the East Coast stuff. So like, I can kind of I I can appreciate the rap stuff, but like. It, the only the only thing is is I just I couldn't like the the break okay break stuff that was actually I'll give them that 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 song at that time was pretty damn heavy not as in like heavy as in like that you know heavy but it was like it made you feel like you literally wanted to to break stuff you you wanted to put your fist through the wall you wanted to punch your teacher you wanted to uh no unfortunately i'm sorry about that beard's law but west coast is way better than east coast because you guys have puff daddy the only great that you have is biggie and that's it i will argue with you left and right about that unfortunately west coast has way better rappers sorry but the only good thing about the east coast that they have is you guys definitely have a lot better punk bands not saying all of them and hardcore bands from dc and virginia but we can go into that whole other thing. Oh, another, that's like, that's gonna be it. That's a sub. Like literally, you're literally naming off topics that I'm going to ask you. Like I don't have this written down. Like I have the interview questions that I'm going to do with Rev. I have those yeah. all written down, and there's some crazy ones on there. But literally, I'm like I'm winging it with you, and I was going to bring up the Beatles, and I was going to bring up you know hardcore and all that good shit. So I'm <sighs> I, I got the hammer for you. You know, uh, yeah, so you whenever do. you're ready. You're my you're my inspiration here, Stump. So, all right. Ooh. (sighs) Okay. All right. Well, unfortunately, so out of the three, I'm going with Run DMC. Uh, I love uh, 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 Tribe. 
I love them. Uh, Public Enemy, I dig some of their stuff, but unfortunately, like, I was more into, like, I... But if we're going to go that route, I'm going to go Fatalist 5. I'm also going to go KRS-One. Uh, that's kind of more my, you know, are you getting one? Oh, yeah, I have a few right here. I just was looking for my coup. I, I, I was going to grab another one here in a second because mine's almost empty. Do you need to disappear for a second? Because uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, one of my big things that I always did on the Triple T podcast is uh-huh. I had pee breaks. And I peed a lot in the hour show that we did. So right. do we need to take a time out and go get a, go get, are you able to, uh, uh, well, I can grab a couple and, uh, are you able to do like uh, some music or something while we, uh, take a break? Oh, I didn't set that up, but, uh, hold on. Um, <laughs> uh, shit. I should have, uh, I should have set up something. Um, can, are you able to do, are you able to link in, uh, one of our two singles? Ooh, if I would have, it, see, I should have planned ahead. I should have really planned with this. You should have said, Joe, you need to set up this. You need to set up this. And I, I probably, you know what? Oh, is it on the Spotify's? You probably can't do that because I literally, I'll grab a couple more Rainiers. I'll come, it'll take me like two seconds. All right. I'm actually going to pull up the Spotify real quick on my phone, hook it to my little smart speaker back there, blast some music while we go pee and, uh, and grab some, hold on. You gotta wait. I'm waiting. <laughs> Actually, so we just played two nights with a couple of bands, uh, one from California and one from Ohio. Uh, we played with a band called uh, what are they called? Raging Nathan's. I've I've heard of them. Yes, I've heard of them. Great, great punk band uh, from Ohio. And then we played with a, another band called uh, um, Oh God, what are they called? Uh, Decent Criminal. They sound. Oh, yeah similar to like Menzinger's very sort of uh, okay so uh, okay oof, we're gonna go oof. that route oh how, how about this let's uh let's go get our drinks let me go pee I'm gonna blast uh, literally I'm, I'm gonna blast my favorite song right here from from you guys and uh, I, I have to piss so bad let me come on why won't you sync up Hold on, hold on. I'm waiting. Hold on, I'm... hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, while we're waiting for that, I'll answer this question. So, we do have NWA, we do have Tupac, we do have Snoop, we have Dre, we have Cube, we have... Uh, not only do we have Easy e but we also have Bone Thugs and Harmony. Not only on that, do we also have uh, Q-Tip, do we not have Nas, do we not have... Uh, who else do we have on the West Coast? Uh, um... We have all the Death Row guys as well, if we're going to go from the 90s stuff. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, Chicano uh, stuff that actually the East Coast does not have. A lot of G-Funk, that a lot of what he just said, which is called G-Funk. Uh, Q-Tip actually now lives in the West Coast, so he's technically not East Coast anymore. So, you unfortunately, cannot fight with Stump. You cannot fight with him. This guy knows his shit. So... But yes, he was a Q tip was also from uh, he did a lot of stuff with tribe and stuff like that. So, yes, I will give Beard Laws that he knows a little bit of that, but he's now on the West Coast because a lot of the East Coast guys moved to the West Coast because unfortunately, West Coast is better. <laughs> now, the other thing is, is we also the East Coast has a lot of which I dig is if we're going to go to the, the rap stuff, they do a lot of more Celtic, more Irish-style rap. We have... Um, you cannot take... No, you can't. It's the same thing with any of the... You can't take a certain style out of somebody. From Harlem, from California, to... I, I'm originally from the Southwest. You will never take that out of me, even though I now live in the Pacific Northwest. It's the same thing with anybody else. Any bands that you try to... Like, I could argue the whole thing with the grunge era. Me and my band just had a whole art, not an argument, but a whole conversation about uh, bands that are from my area that got big within the uh, grunge era and only had one big hit, and that was it. So it's like, and because of the fact that they were drawing all that from um, my, my time. What most 
Oh, he's trying to fight. He's trying to fight. Okay, first of all, Q-tip is not buried. Second of all, okay, method, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. First of all, they're Wu Tang. They're not Method Man and Red Man. They're from Wu Tang, so I will always approve and I will always appreciate Wu Tang for what they are, no matter what. Because Wu Tang is for the children, and they are forever. So yes, I I'll give I'll give Beer Laws exactly. I'll give Beer Laws that I will always represent Wu Tang, no matter what. So oh, God. <laughs> they don't call All me right. stop for nothing. Can we go pee now? Yeah, go pee. I'm gonna go grab a couple more in here. All right, I'm gonna play a song. Uh, fucking a. Well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, like I said, I'm all about, you know, having conversations like this, but I'm also, you know, you know what? If you got to pee, leave. You know what? We're going to do it anyways. Yeah. And By no, the way, bust so, out the... well, I, I have one of these. It's actually yours. I, the, I haven't sent it to you yet, but this is your koozie. You know, so. you know what really irritates me about beer koozies? All right. So I had a nice collection for a while. And since we moved last year, I have no idea where any of them are except for two of them. I don't know. Like, because I got the um, I got the uh, phasers on kill one that I apparently uh, still never paid for. Um, don't worry about it. You're good. I know. Well, fuck. You, you know what? I you mean, bought... You bought my ba- you you have my ba- my new band's record on Spotify. You you spread it on on all the other TikTok and all the other stuff. So you know what, you're good. Do you guys, you okay? It. So speaking of Spotify, do you guys? I don't know how Spotify works. I know that you like bands don't get paid shit. <laughs> we got paid. Um, <laughs> so we so we are constantly looking to see what our uh constantly so we found out that we're getting paid or not paid we're getting played a lot in norway switzerland russia a lot more than anywhere else and we're also which is that's crazy yeah which is nuts uh we've been played so um after our second single came out we got asked uh if a canadian like uh, radio station that owns like all the radio stations in Canada, if they can play our, uh, if they can play Jameson on ice and we're like, uh, yeah, like we're not going to say no, excuse me. And so did a internet, uh, uh, like internet radio station out of France asked us to do a call out, which is like us saying, you know, Hey, you're listening to, you know, this is so-and-so from this band. You're listening to blah, blah, blah. So we got that going in France and we now have like people in Brazil, which by the way, Brazil people that are like fans of punk rock are nuts and like in the good way. 
like not in the bad way in the good way really and oh it's like they're all about like buying records merch cds like anything and everything they can they can get from us they will they want us down there so bad but like at this point we're we're an on-site punk band we we don't like we're playing some shows coming up which by the way we're playing down in portland on february 5th february 5th uh, <sighs> at the the hawthorne hideaway i know uh, i've never been there but i've heard things i've, I've heard I, about it the only the only venue i've played in portland was uh twilight lounge with the 10 foot stage which makes, oh the little the little skinny place uh, yeah, this and this the stage is like this high up. It's it makes no sense. I've been there twice. I've been it, there to see uh, Harley Poe because I went with my wife, eh. and then I saw the Drowns the last time they were in town. Um, okay. I okay. hate I hate that place because I don't like crowds. I I I can't. But when it gets packed, it's just it's so tight and it's just so fucking annoying. Yeah, and I I can't stand that venue. Well, we, we, so we played, uh, the plaid pig, which is very similar. I don't know what, what, I don't know. Okay. Like, you know how the Charleston setup is? Yeah. In Bremerton where just obviously, I mean, my old base, I used to be in red wine, die Indian angel. Like I've been, the Charleston was my second home for a while. So, so, which I've always heard stories about that place. So I always tried to stay away from it. <laughs> Just uh, to, but also because of the person I was in a band with, which we won't talk about, was not allowed to be there. So that's why we never played. But I heard so many, you know, like just not good stories about the Charleston. Are you, uh, are you talking about who are you talking about? Chris, Mike? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, way, no, way Mike. before. Way, way. Oh, before. oh, the Broken Oar stuff? Broken Oars guys, yeah. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um basically the long the long yeah, the long the long short of it, we weren't allowed to play there due to him, but there was a, but I, I won't yeah. say anything bad about the guy because I, I already know the whole the whole yeah. background of that whole thing that happened and yada yada yada. So yeah, so I always heard really negative things about the venue, so that's why we just never played there. But when we got asked to play there with uh, our friends, the Fibs, we got to play with the Fibs. Um, oh, God, who is the other band? Uh, uh, Kids on Fire and uh, Disorderlies. We got to oh play with them. God. And uh, which, which is honestly a fun, it was a fun show. All the Bremerton people were there. And even, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody you don't like showed up and I know, I know, I know you sent me the picture I did and uh, but it was still a fun night you know uh, getting to see everybody all my my friends that I haven't seen in forever you know all my Bremerton people and it was it was fun you know I actually dug the stage I dug uh, especially the deaf uh, sound guy was oh, the best part of the whole, was it the yeah. guy Old Steve guy. is the best sound guy that I've ever met in my entire life. That's why Steve. that's that's what I'm saying. He was oh probably one God. of the best sound guys I've ever had. Because if I was like if I was like, hey, can I get a little bit more vocal? He wouldn't just turn it up to where it yeah. would be like just he would be like, Oh, you want a little bit? There you go. Or he wouldn't bit. pretend that he did it and be like, Is that good? Yeah. No. Steve is one of those guys, like he was like right away he was your best friend. Yeah. And it was funny. Like I went to a show one time. He's like, "Oh, you playing? Oh, you know." I'm like, I "I'm just here, bro. Like I'm just here for a show." And like Steve was rad. I love that guy. He was he was super cool. Yeah. Um, no, I, I I miss the Charleston. That's definitely uh, one of my second home. I've I've done some stupid shit at the Charleston. Uh, I have not because I've only I, been there once. But. I, the stupidest <laughs> thing I've done is, well, I've gotten a tattoo from the tattoo parlor across the across the street. Shit, sorry, sorry, I, I found a spider. Uh, are you talking about? Um, oh, I, know I don't which know. Tattoo. Oh, fuck. It's literally right across the street from the. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. So what, so, what do you mean? You, that was a stupid thing. You got a tattoo. Yeah. That so, I, I go to a shop here in Tacoma uh, that I and I have a shop that I go to that I get tattooed. Which one? And, 
I, they're called homage tattoo or homage tattoo. Uh, it used to be ink spot, but now it's 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 called homage tattoo. It's off of uh, it's in South Tacoma Way. Okay, okay. So, but uh, I'm it was just it. it was just on a whim. Oh, excuse me, that like right before the show, I'm the only one out of the band that did not at the time have the let me downs tattoo. I'm, you know, and I was waiting for it because I wanted to set an appointment up. Yep. And so we just, you know, me and the guitar player just went in and the dude was sleeping on the couch, which should have just been a red flag right then and there. There's a cat and a dog literally <laughs> in it. So, which is another red flag. And I'm thinking, I'm like, the f- what am I getting into? Uh, I hope I'm, it's okay is, for me to. Uh, is it okay shit. to cuss on here? I'm good with it. Oh yeah, no cuss. Sorry, oh, okay. I'm I'm looking up the tattoo place. So you got Plaid Pick that I've never been to, yep. Church Cantina I've never yep. been to. I have not been to the New Airport Tavern. That's um, that's uh, that's the uh, old that's the bass player from the Faces on Kill. That's actually his bar. No shit. I I mean because yeah. I used to go to the airport when like when it was real art bar. was the viaduct. Yep, and go into the airport as when it was a gay bar a that drag shit. bar not a gay bar it was it no, was sorry. a drag bar not a gay bar uh which version it, did you know because i always knew it as the gay bar and it got awkward uh i knew um, it as the drag bar i i well it was either okay the way i knew it was if you went down south to come away you either had the opal or you had uh stonegate were the only funny two story places. about stonegate Funny story about Stonegate. I used to be in a shitty metal band when I was 19, and I opened for Psycho 78 at the Stonegate. Oh, and, right. and we weren't allowed to stay because we were minors. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a there's a whole thing about Psycho 78 now too. You don't know. Oh fuck. No, no, it's a good thing. Oh, okay. Are... Uh, so this will, which nobody from that's really going to watch it that knows me is going to watch it. But if they do, great. And this is where they're going to find out. But uh, I'm now the drummer for Psycho 78. Really? Yeah. So I'm not going to get much into it right now. It's been kind of a hush hush sort of deal. Um, but I'm so let me down is my, you know, is my baby and will be my baby. Um, but Mike and I from Psycho 70 and Phase Run on Kill, um, we're basically, yeah, pretty much, uh, <laughs> at, at some point, uh, most likely this year or next year, uh, we are gonna, we're gonna play, uh, and it's actually the original guys with Justin, Jay, and Mike are, are all gonna be there, and then plus myself, so, uh, oh, we have, yeah, we have some stuff coming up, we've been writing some new stuff. Uh, it's definitely a little bit more technical than what it was before, and I don't know if that's because of me or because I'm bringing stuff out that they have not been able to do. Because don't get me wrong, Davo is a good dude. He's a he's a decent drummer, but he, him and I are two different worlds. We're right. I'm more of a play it. Okay, I'm gonna set the meter and I'm ready to go. Like I put a click in my ear and let's just, let's just go with it and I'll figure it out from there. Like Heads up, my wife is home. So the garage door might open. So it might be really loud. I heard, I heard the honk. I'm waiting oh, for it. Oh, she's going through the front door. Oh, oh I hear um, the dogs. So you got to think about like, you know, like things when you say, you know, technical, this, that, and the other thing, tell me I'm wrong, but as you get older, like the way you do music, the way everything, it just completely changes. Cause you're not like the like the teenage just three chord simple punk beat, you know, all that shit. You're gonna change your shit up. That so as a that was a six point five. Um my <laughs> thing is my thing is as a drummer, so I'm not just a drummer, I'm a musician. So yep. I the way I do it in my uh, I've done this with every band is I will listen to what the guitar player is doing. I literally will have them play the song over and over and over to where they get annoyed with me. But the reason why I do that is because okay, I'm I'm the foundation. I'm the heartbeat of the song of the music. The rhythm sec. I'm the I'm basically what makes the song. And 
so with me, it's easier for me to go, okay, let's try this first. And I'll try just a sim. I won't do anything crazy. I won't do fills. I won't do crazy crashes. I'll just do a basic, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, four, four B, you know, one, two, three, four, yep. one, two, three, four, kind of, you know, for non-music people, that's literally what I hear in my head. But then it's like, okay, I play to the song. So, like, for example, with the Let Me Downs, a lot of what you hear, we have now progressed after the record because now we've heard it so much to where we're like, well, okay, we sh I should have done this on this part. Instead of doing the right on this part, I should have been doing my hi-hats. Right. So it's, but then again, I'm also the type of person to where if I go to a live show, I don't want to hear the record. I, if I want to hear the record, I'm going to put the record on and stare at the poster in my yeah. bedroom because yeah. that's literally what, so I want to hear the drummer playing something different. I want to hear the guitar players doing a, like being down tuned to a different tuning. So it's like, you know, and the vocals doing something a little bit different. I want to hear the melody, but I want to hear them go, uh, you know, be a live band. And that's what the experience of a live show is about. Now, like, okay, I went and, uh, I went, and, I, I got a solid tool the other night. I saw, I saw, I saw that. Yeah. And I'm not a tool fan. I'm not, no. I'm, I'm really not, but I, I didn't take a lot of pictures. I, I think I took two and I think I sent you one, I think. Yeah. Oh, I saw it on like Instagram or something. I don't think you actually sent it to me, but I, I think I saw it on like yeah, Instagram yeah. or some shit. So, but my thing was, it, it was a cool experience. Yeah. It was, it was kind of cool to just be like, oh, okay, this is very interesting. This is different from my normal, you know, everyday sort of, but I dug it. Now, I was bored <laughs> halfway through because I'm just kind of like, okay, when are they going to play, like, you know, Prism? When are they going to play, you know, 4, 6, and 2? When are they going to play? you know from the radio stations, right? From the radio stuff. But my brother is a big Tool fan. Funny enough is I text my brother and he's there. And literally, he was a few. Really? Real, I yeah. So I got my free ticket from a friend of mine who was just in town, and she was like, "Hey, we have a free ticket. Do you want to go?" And I'm like, "I have to work tomorrow. Like, I don't know. You know, I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's. I'm just gonna do it. Like, I told my boss, I said, "Hey, I may not show up late tomorrow," and she's like, "Why?" And I'm like, "I got invited to go to a show at the Tacoma Dome, so I might show up." I'm, I may be late. She was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. You know, well, that's dope. Yeah. But at the same time, it was an experience for two reasons. One, because, you know, A, because of the whole COVID stuff. But two, to actually watch like a band that's like been around since I was a kid with all the original members and it to be, well, except for the bass player, um, to be basically like a legendary band, even though it's not my thing and literally watch them do their thing. It was cool. It was, it was the visual effects were cool. Audio sucked because whoever was doing their <laughs> audio, uh, I, like when, when the drummer was doing double bass, you couldn't hear. It, it was just like, it was just, just, it was just Brown. note. you couldn't hear anything else. So, but it, it was cool. It was, you know, um, but that's kind of how I am. I'm a musician. I listen to what, and I've always been that way. I like doing the, what we call the polka beat or the, uh, the, uh, a gallop, you know, uh, the skate punk beat. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I get bored with it because that's what Smelly does from No Effects. That's what Yuri does from MXPX. That's, yep. you know, that's what those guys do and they're good at it. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I want to do like, I want to do things that are going to set me apart from being other drummers. Now, am I ever going to be the, the 
you know, the top five or the top three drummers out there? And, you know, am I going to be the, you know, the next John Bonham or whatever? I don't want to yes. be those guys. Yeah, I just want to be right. myself. You know, I'm just saying, like, do it, yeah. am I going to be? I would absolutely love to, but that's not a hundred percent of what I want to do because to me, I just want to play music. I want it. My thing is, is I just want people to love what I do. And apparently, apparently with this band and the way how we recorded the album, people are digging this album. Like the other day we got, uh, I wake up, and I get this alert that a tray you, you know who a tray you is. Oh yeah, no, I saw that whole that the whole thing. What like the a tray you playlist or some shit? Like what yeah, ha- like what was that? So uh, Brandon Sellers, the drummer, uh, was on Twitch, and we were like part of like I think it was uh, 15, 15 bands. Um, we got selected, and um, oh, tell the wife I said hi. Somebody says hi. And uh, so, the the long short of it, we uh, hi hi hi. Oh hi! He, he can't. No, he says hi. Oh, you can't hear him. Okay. I have the headphone in. Can you read lips? He, no, he can hear you. Oh, you can't hear him. <laughs> I can't read lips. Yeah, I can't either. He's just been talking, talking, talking this whole damn time. He's made it so much easier on me. Good. Do you have your list of like I, interview I, questions? No, I didn't make a list for him. I made, also, a, I made it. I made an intro for him though. I had my list for did. Aaron, but not for him. What did he say? He he did. Okay. No, I made a nice little intro quickly for him and. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And he just looks like he's like sporting the Rainier. Yeah, he the Rainier. Rainier. I, I don't drink that PBR. He doesn't drink the PBR. Fuck you. I'll drink hams, which is pretty much the exact same. Okay, listen. Hams is a completely different... Like, I have an order. I will go Rainier... Or, sorry, Pabst, Rainier, Olympia, Hams, and then Bush. Ew, no. Hams comes before Olympia. No! Yes. Get out of here. Uh, I'll I'll actually... Okay. If we're gonna, if we're gonna do it, it goes Rainier. Rainier? Hams. Ham? Wow. Where's your other Over there. And then I'll go pub beer, which is technically bush. Pub beer? Jesus. Oh, I love Ten Barrels pub beer. Is pub, amazing. Pub beer, like, it's it's, just, it's 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 no no it's the it's the it's the same recipe as bush. No no it tastes no, no, totally yeah. different than bush. It's no, way it's different not. than bush. No, it's not. Actually, they they took yeah. Look it up. It's the exact same recipe. The only difference is is the water. No, it's it it tastes it hoppier. It tastes hoppier. No, it's the same recipe. So does does pub beer have more water or less water, or is it it's, a type of water? It's a type of water. Okay. It's they took the recipe of Bush. It's Jesus the. Bullshit. I'm I'm I don't believe you because pub beer tastes way different than bush. Have you compared bush and a pub beer next to each other? Like drinking it like side yeah. by side? Yeah. No, I know that pub beer just tastes way different. No. Yeah, to pub beer has like the cuz Ten Barrel themselves has like that unique taste, like just like Rogue has Okay, this taste. is way too much fucking and, work. Yeah, no. Bush tastes like crap. It- whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. It's it it's literally it's, Come on. It, it's the same beer. Okay, bud. It's not the same beer. Hey, we're getting distracted from the topics that I'm ready to ask <laughs> you about, damn it. All right, well ask me. All right. Growing up, you said that like you grew up with like Led Zeppelin and what the Who and all that good shit. Doors, uh Blink or not Blink. Well that was later. <laughs> well, uh Pink Floyd. Uh, with my dad, and then like my mom was more like '80s hair metal, uh, Pat Benatar, Blondie, but she still listened to all the greats. The one band that both my parents did not appreciate, which I actually appreciated, was Rush. My mom could not stand Geddy Lee's voice. That was the only reason why she didn't like him. My dad didn't like him because he couldn't understand it, even though he listened to Pink Floyd, Yes, Genesis, all those bands. Which made so, no sense. 
so growing up, like, you know, in my high school, I there was always the people that had like the the t-shirts and all stuff. It it made me grow to just hate these bands because of certain people. Like, yeah. you know, I enjoyed I I did enjoy Led Zeppelin. I did enjoy Pink Floyd, but I was actually told by a buddy that because I don't play D and D, that I shouldn't enjoy Rush. Durfee. Really? James Durfee. Okay. Rush well, is fucking amazing, though. Okay. Well, that's funny because Rush, first of all, has no songs about dragons, fairies, nor do they have anything about dungeons like Led Zeppelin does. Led Zeppelin is more of a D&D band. Rush yeah. is more of what, what me and you can, would consider a prog punk band. The yeah. reason why is because they, especially with what um, what Neil Peart wrote about, was about what was happening in society and what was happening with like his generation. Now, with because he was the main uh, writer of the band. Excuse me. Oh, that was a, like a good eight. That was a solid thank eight. Thank you. Right there. Thank you. Thank you. I, I haven't shotgunned I, yet, so like I haven't gotten that good burp out. I'm not. But... I got 16 ounces, and I don't have a shotgun tool yet. You know, uh, Lincoln Bio and Joe's Bio. Well, I already have to send you a little fancy ring light. I think I might have to make you a little care package, sir. Dude, if you get me one, I will not not one of these bad boys, but I'll do a, a 12 ounce. All right, I, no, hold on. Will you? This is what I feel so fucked up. Will you be able to use it? Use yeah. it. <laughs> the only thing is, is I got to figure out how to. So, like, in the video that I did with you, I couldn't, like, I have to, yeah. so the way I have to do it is, so I have to hold the can, okay, and so I have more, so with my, my paw, as my, my mm -hmm. mom calls it, I have to grab it, and I have to open it. So, with, like, what, um, uh, um, what's his name, uh, oh, God, what, what is, uh, he has the, the party starter. Uh, oh, are you talking about shock, uh, shock on taste test? Uh, yes. Robin, yeah, his yes. name's Robin. I can't remember his fucking what? last name. No, what's it? What's his name on TikTok? It's like shotgun taste test. Yeah. So when he does that thing where he he hits it, yeah. and then I if I got one of those, but not as a koozie, but if it was like a or like a real thinner koozie, mm -hmm. I I could be able to do that e easily now. But with the uh, the if there was a way I can do the shotgun. The, the tool that you have to where I can open it without it spilling out and then open the top and then be able to do it. I, I, from the top side, it would probably be a lot easier for me. I think you need one of those little gadgets. There's those little gadgets that go underneath the fucking. Tab. Yeah. So if I, and I mean, I can, I, I can figure it out, but I honestly, I don't think it, it would be hard. Cause like all I'd have to do is do the, the shotgun first. And then turn it to the side. I would just have to like, I'd have to like do it maybe left-handed. So I'd have to do it with my my left. This is my left hand. Yeah. I'd probably have to do it to where I grab it underneath and then just open it and just go as suit as fast oh, yeah. as I can. No, could. I always pop with the left hand, even though I'm right-handed. It's so weird. Like it, it, it's completely different how people do. It. Like Marquitos, he pops it but then switches hands. It's like what? It it, it yeah. trips me out. Well, Just, the yeah, thing that I, I got you the the thing that would would so if I did it, I would I I'll figure I could figure it out. It wouldn't take oh, yeah. me, dude. Oh, if I can, if, if I can button my pants and play drums, I think I can figure out how to do. The I was gonna drum. say I've seen you do that little stick thing. So yeah, I mean you're yeah, you're I, not incapable of doing what you do, even though you have the disability. Which, you know, we can make jokes. It's hilarious when you like disability. It, it is funny, like when we you when you make the jokes, and I feel bad for laughing, but oh, it, I know, it, but because we're buds, it, I feel like because we're buds, we're it's okay. But it is like it's it's insane how people can do the things that people like. Uh, what's his name from uh, uh, fucking Def Leppard? He learned how to play oh. fucking drums with one okay. goddamn arm. So he's actually one of the he's actually the reason why I picked up drums. I was gonna one of my questions. I mean, yeah. I, See, so I, I planned on asking all these questions way earlier, but one of my questions is like that one inspiration you being of the 
I, 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 I don't. Okay, here's the thing. I don't have a disability. The reason you why just I just have a, a, a D, a, what is it? Like a, can we say a defect? Like a, like I, a, it's, defect? It's, a it's a birth defect. But yeah. if I was disabled, I wouldn't be able to work. I wouldn't be able to do all these things. But like, uh, my thing is, is like, if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to be so spiteful to you because I'm going to be like, hold my beer and yep. watch me. Because yep. if, if like, one of the best compliments I got last night uh, was the craziest thing. So our uh, guitar player and singer, one of the singers in the band, we were talking, he was talking to one of the other bands and he was talking to the, one of the drummers and I'm just, I'm not really paying attention. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. And he, he, he asked him, he's like, how the hell does he play drums? And just as just, you know, just, just asking. And he goes, I don't know. You should see how he plays bass. It's fucking insane. Is that a real thing? Yeah. No shit. Yeah. I don't, I'm not just a drummer. I can play other instruments. The only instrument I wish I can actually like sit down and learn and try to figure out out is piano. The so only fun re- story, fun story. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is like, I was hoping you were going to say piano. Um, growing up with my father, he was, you know, hanging out with the bikers and shit. And he knew this guy fingers. I don't know if I ever told you about the story about fingers. But he had. I don't thumbs. have any, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. Well, he had thumbs and nubs. <laughs> and so me. Exactly. So I guess the story <laughs> is: is growing up, his mom was really fucked up, and she took a cleaver and chopped the fuckers off. Oh. He could still ride a, ride a motorcycle, which is kind of funny, like how he had to. Sh- like, I, I always clutch. do. Yeah, I always do. But my my thumbs are. I call them Megan th- uh, Megan Fox thumbs. Oh, gross! They're not toe thumb. Oh God. Oh no! Me and her have the same size thumbs. Well, but she has that weird like nail. Yeah. And, anyways, yeah. so like he could ride a motorcycle, but the guy could play piano, like nobody's business. And with his fucking like, yeah, like literally, they were cut. At, like below that that knuckle and the way he could play piano was just fucking amazing and i be, when i first met him i was probably like six or seven and i'm like hold on i i didn't understand i'm like how how do you do that because you don't have but he did it and well he would he played he, piano very beautifully my thing is, is okay. So when I was younger, the reason why I got really into drums, drum, just in general, I was born with really bad asthma to where I had to have a nebulizer. I had to always like, I couldn't play sports. I wanted to play baseball. Baseball was the one I wanted to play. Like to where I was like, I want to do this. I want to do something. Cause you know, my dad was really pushing my older brothers, my two older brothers, especially to play sports because my dad was, you know, my dad's that like, you gotta, you gotta be like me. You gotta, you know, the Al Bundy, you know, you gotta do, that was my dad. Right. But he looked like Tommy Chong. That's my dad. (laughs) So, but, um, my thing was, I want to play baseball. Well, you know, my parents basically were like, you can't. And I'm like, why can't I? They're just like, you can't. I'm like, but why? If bless you. And there's another one. No. Too much pepper? No, it's just allergies. Allergies? Like, I get the it. The dust I, in the fucking garage. I I, I get it. I, I had I had the whole allergy attack when I was at work the other day and they thought it was God. COVID and I'm like, it's not. No. Um so but the long short the long the long short of it was I was like, you know what? They're not gonna allow me to, to do they're not going to allow me to play sports because of my asthma. Well, I want to do something different than my brothers. I saw Rick Allen from Def Leppard. I saw, I think it was the video for animal. I think is what it was or one of them. And he's literally playing with just one arm. And I'm like, wait, if he's able to do that with one arm, why can't I do that? So, I learned literally how to play drums just by mimicking what I saw on MTV, VH1, and like Much Music, and all those other like you know um, 
in, before the internet. So I learned how to air drum just by watching these guys, just like just literally just doing this to music in headphones, and you know hitting a bass drum with my foot when it was supposed to be in the hi hat when I was supposed to, and that's how I learned. And so I learned from Rick Allen, John Bonham, Keith Moon. Uh, were the three guys that I really was like I identified with because I loved their playing. Then it went into then the thrash metal guys, you know Charlie Benante from Anthrax, mm -hmm. uh, Vinny Paul from Pantera. Uh, then it went to Lars Ulrich, which a lot of people will give Lars Ulrich a lot of shit. Hold on, well, let me just let me just say this. Uh, so recently uh, on Amazon. There was a whole like two night thing of Metallica doing a whole like concert series. Yeah, the S and M thing. Yeah. Uh, let me just say, the uh, whoever was running that whole setup for sound and shit uh -huh. should not have put so much focus on Lars's drums. Like I don't, I don't know. Like it was just so bad. It was so bad listening to his drums mic'd up the way that they were and how they were like mixed in the whole fucking thing that that the bass drum especially like it was he was off he was off really bad and i it was so it was hard to fucking watch i learned so he actually this is the weird thing which i didn't know this so live he plays to a click really which i didn't know that I didn't know. I I thought he like no. So live, he's playing. So if he's not like playing to the click, they turn the click off and he just plays. So, uh, but I learned the rest of the band does not have him in their in their in ears. None. So Kurt, James, and Robert don't have Lars in their mix. So they're literally listening to each other, and Lars is listening to them. But, that would drive me nuts. So live with me, like I have to. I don't like having me in my monitors. Right. I I because uh, especially a lot of uh, it, it's sad to say, but a lot of venue sound people cannot mix monitors for a band they can mix a room mm -hmm. beautifully they can make it sound great but when they do monitors for bands they don't know what the fuck they're doing and it sucks because except for steve from bermerton he's that for guy steve from bermerton. Was, he knew what the he, fuck he was doing he made my mix sound beautifully he was like hey i'm just gonna put like a touch of kick in there i'm like no <laughs> I was like, please do not put any of me in my monitor. I he just always want... made my monitor sound great. He, I, he, he did everything he needed. So for me, okay, as the drummer, the drums are, you know, drums are just loud. Yeah. Right? I don't, especially if I'm behind the the amps, all I need in my monitors or my in-ears when, when I'm wearing my in-ears, all I need is bass guitar, guitar, and vocals. Yeah. That's it. Maybe if you want to throw just maybe a touch, just just a like a, just a hair of maybe the kick and like the because when I'm playing, I can hear what I'm doing. Yeah. Like I can, I even with my inners, I can still. I'm using my inners tonight, by the way, because my computer speakers are garbage. It's so okay. um, I, have, I have my wireless headphones yeah, in too because I, was, I can't. Uh, I wouldn't be able to hear you at all. Yeah, I was going to do that, but my wireless ones are garbage, and only one of them works, and I was like, I'm not oh. doing that. Like, so I bought them on Amazon for like 20 bucks, but, oh. so for me, like, I like I want like, a certain mix, right? The rest of the guys want to hear my kick, they want to hear my snare, and that's it. They, they And then they want to hear each other. That's all they want in their mix. That's it. Mm -hmm. I, and, and each of them could be a little bit different for each, but for me, all I really need is I just I need them. I'm the one that's doing everything else because they're listening to me. So if I mess up, if I fuck up, they fuck up. Oh yeah. But but typically I'm able to recover so quickly that 
the audience will never know that I messed up or dropped a stick or I missed a roll because even if I miss the roll, I'm going to come back on that one, no matter what, always. But it's always for me, I'm putting on a show. I don't sit still. I, I'm i not one of those drummers that I'm like, you know, I sit and I'm just... Right. I'm, I'm bored. I mean, you'll sit there and see me get... I go ham. And, uh, like, I remember uh, Chris... Actually, there was one time we played We played with, I think it was face-to-face. And, uh, you know, Chris had a meeting with all of us backstage where Chris was like, you know, hey, uh, you know, don't, don't mess up. Don't don't do this or that. And I'm, I'm literally, I'm like, no, I'm going to have fun tonight. If I fuck up, I fuck up. Like I'm all about literally about the experience of the show. If we're not here to have fun, then what's the point? Because they're here for the experience. They're not here to hear the album. Most of these people, probably 90% of the people don't even know who we are. So, and as long as we put on a good show, who cares? Because that's what that's the important part, you know. It's punk rock. You don't need to be polished. You don't need to be a hundred percent all the time. Do we want as as musicians? Do we want to be a hundred percent all the time? Yes. But does it happen? No. And that's okay. Like um, it's the same thing with painting. Like. Or, or television or movies. There's so many movies that you can you can see continuity errors that are freaking hilarious, and it it's you know it's great because now you look back on it and you're like that. Ah, did you see that? Did you see that mistake that was there? Uh, I've seen that before too. But you know what I'm saying? Like, not everybody is gonna see it. Not everybody's gonna know I missed a roll at, in a song that. You know, they're, they're all they're really they're making sure that I'm playing somewhat of, of what I'm supposed to. I remember right. even uh, I got it actually someone on TikTok not too long ago got angry at me because I put my own rendition to a song. Uh, it was it was some dude. I don't even know what the song is. I, th- I think it's like an R&B song from like the 70s. He got so upset that I was playing to like, or playing with a part that like the drum should be playing on that. He got so upset that he had to have an argument with me. And I'm literally like, well, if you're going to bring this sort of, you know, I'm, I'm, if you're going to bring it, I'm going to, I'm going to bring it right back. Whatever you have to say and tell me, all this, like whatever, I'm gonna do it right back to you because guess what? You you're not gonna sit there and tell me, oh, you're a shitty drummer. What do you do? Oh, you don't play an instrument? Okay, that's great. That's your opinion. You're allowed to have that that opinion. But if you're gonna sit there and tell me I'm a shitty drummer, give me a reason. Give give me give me criticism. But if you don't play an instrument, shut the fuck up. I don't give two shits of, of your opinion at that point. You don't do what I do. Shut up. Like it's that simple. But he's a, so, he was a, he's an internet a internet troll. So I just yeah. I had to basically be like I, I basically had to put it nicely is just to be like shut your mouth, move on. So when you say that, so there was there was a fun story that I I had. You know the scissor beat, blah 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 blah. blah. You know like you know your basic scissor beat. So we were playing a show. Red wine die played a show years and years ago. I, we're somewhere in California. I cannot remember to save my life where the hell we are. Um, oh, no. We were in Reno. We were playing a basement show in Reno. And my drummer, like, Red Wine Die is always like that simple, you know, there's a lot of scissor beats. There's a lot of simple, simple scissor or simple yeah. beats and shit. So, Globy from Generation Decline, like, you know, we were on tour with them. And somebody during our set apparently talked shit about my drummer. Like, oh, all he's doing is blah, 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 blah. And there was a point where Owen's arms got so fucking tired. That last song he did not want to do, but he still busted it out. As soon as it ended, he threw the fucking sticks down and he fucking left. This random person is talking shit. 
And Globy's like, have you ever had to do a scissor beat at that fucking quick over and over and fucking over again? For that long? It, for, it's, exactly. It's, like, yeah, it, it, it's was, an it was insane. It was insane. Yeah. Like, we, like, Owen got pushed a little bit harder than he should have, but, you know, he was still, you know, he was still going to fucking tough it out. I bet but you do you think that was that was his best show, that was your guys' best show, because someone told him that pushed his buttons to be like, that dude sucks. Oh, no, nobody no, nobody said it. They just said it to Globy, and Globy told us, like, two days later. And it's just like, you know, fuck that guy. Like, who is he? He He's just a guy that was in the basement. And yeah. it's, it's the same shit. It's like, if you're – who are you to talk if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about? If you're if you're not if you're not paying my bills, exactly. and if you're not if you're there to see us, and you're going to criticize what I do, unless you're our producer, you're sitting in and you're writing the songs with us. Other than that, don't say anything. Just enjoy the show. Like I had a I had a confrontation uh, one time. I uh, one of my old bands we went and played Spokane. I don't even know if this place still exists, but it was called the Cretan Hop, I believe. We went and played Spokane with, I don't know if you ever heard of CLR. I don't know if if CLR was a thing when you came in. I've heard heard the name, but I think they were done by the time I got up here. Yeah, so it was, you know, Garrett, who used to play in Burn, Burn, Burn. He was the drummer. Um, Oh, fuck, was on the ground. Anyways, so we went out there, and there was just a bunch of kids talking shit in the crowd. And I stopped the fucking set halfway through. And I go, guys. We literally traveled 350 miles to play in front of you. And you're talking shit about my singer right now because you guys don't like understand what he's doing. Can you get up here and do better? Yeah. And then that person shut the fuck up. We continued our set. And then he broke his ankle later throughout the show. It See, was a whole fucking thing. Like he ended up getting excited about everything, and he ended up breaking his fucking ankle. Let me let me just say, side story: that guy ended up being in one of the greatest fucking bands I've ever heard in my entire life, and they only lasted about three months, and I was very disappointed. See, that's my thing. Like i I don't care for critics because they're not doing what I'm doing. They're they're there to critique. They're there to be a critic. And a lot of these people who, especially within the scenes, like they're, you're always going to get those guys who, excuse me, are going to sit there and say, well, I could do better. And it's just like, I'll hand them okay. my sticks and be like, show me. Okay. Pro- prove me wrong. Yeah. Pro- prove, pro- like, show me that you can do better than me. Like, show me that you can write better songs than I can. Like, how many albums have you put out? How many times have you toured? How many times have you, like, wasted, not wasted, but, like, put so much money and effort into being in a band? Yeah. Oh, you haven't. Oh, you're you're just this dude who goes to shows and you're pissed off because you don't have the skill nor the talent to do it, yet you want to sit and talk so much trash about... Uh, about these other bands like i don't understand like if i don't like a band i'm not gonna uh, you you'll tell by like my body language that i don't like the band but i'm not gonna talk shit about the band because you know what they're doing the same thing i'm doing they're getting up there and putting their blood sweat and tears into what they're doing i won't have you ever done one of those like you know you didn't enjoy it but you still went up and like hey i enjoyed your set shit or did you just kind of avoid even do it like you're playing a fucking show with his band and you feel like you have to like interact with him in some way. I yeah. I just say I just say, hey, you know what? Thank you for playing tonight. Yeah. I d I don't even say good set. Like usually I I've actually uh I've toured so much and I've I've always had those dudes be like, Good set, man. I'm like, to me that's just the 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 universal like, I the, it's a universal sign of oh, okay, that was good. It, it was decent, but like yeah. I, one of the best. I mean, one of the best compliments we we I've ever gotten was that, was that was a question I was coming up with. Yes, 
was we were playing a show. Actually, was at the Charleston. We don't know what band it was at the night. We don't know if it was the Fibs. We don't know if it was the Disorderlies. We don't know oh. if it was uh, Kids on Fire. We don't know who it was, but some we had just got done playing. One of the guys in my band overheard someone say, "Oh shit, we have to step our game up tonight." To me. That's a way better compliment and a way better like, hey, good job, than yeah. oh, good set, man. Because when I hear good, like good set or like you know that sort of thing, to me it's almost like the you know, um, here's your partition trophy. Here's your here here's your ribbon for showing up. Like I appreciate it. Like I just tell guys, hey, it's like it's like, dude, you you guys sounded good tonight, yeah. like. Me saying that, I'll be up front because I'm a musician. I'll straight up tell him, be like, hey, by the way, I couldn't hear this out in the, you know, but I'll usually go up to the stage where I'm literally like, you know, I'm I'm this close to the, mm -hmm. the singer. And I'll literally be like, and I'm dissecting as a musician, not a fan, but as a musician, I'm dissecting what I'm hearing. And I'll give them, you know, I'll be like, hey, so, I you know I'll be like, hey, I'm just giving you guys criticism. Find a new drummer, or by the way, I think you guys need to start playing to a click, or hey, your guitar player is really good, but he needs to maybe like you guys maybe should turn him up a little bit more, or hey, singer, you're doing too much. Like I'm right. I'm I'd rather give them actual credit like positive criticism. Then to be like, give that pat on the back to boost their ego. Because I would rather someone come up to me and be like, hey, Stump, by the way, you play your drums way too loud. I'd be like, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't control the sound of the room. Yeah. Uh, but okay. Like, I, I'll take I'll take that criticism. I'll take that as a, you know what? They didn't say, hey, you did a shit job. Because then they're 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 dissecting what I'm doing, you know. Uh, for me, one of the other things is, is people will be like, you know, though after the show they'll go shake my hand and they're like, oh shit, I didn't realize you had a, like, oh now I get why they call you stump. And it's like, okay, like I I've heard it so much that I'm just not burnt by it, but I'm just kind of like, yeah, that's why they call me stump. That's that's why I've embraced this nickname. This is why, like, it's it's who I am. That's my stage name. That's, like, I, I'm i that person. When I'm on stage, I'm a completely different person. And if it means anything, I've seen, when you were playing with Broken Oars, I've seen that band a few times. And oh, I had no fucking... I didn't know until, like, literally TikTok. Yeah. About like I knew who you were, I didn't know until TikTok about the what you had going on. Yeah, and it it's just like um, it's just like Chuck from the Cutwinkles, the drummer from the Cutwinkles. He's he you know he has his you know he has his his thing, and he, you know he's the same fucking like he he he's out or he's beaten the disability birth yeah. defect all the shit to be able to be a drummer, and yeah. it, it's fucking rad. It it's. My thing is, is like I don't want to be pigeonholed into being a disabled drummer. I want to be somebody's favorite drummer, right. not because of the fact that I have a disability. It's great that I have a disability and I'm able to drum and do all these things, but I don't want to be just it. It's like when people say, "Oh, he's my great, he's my favorite rapper because of the fact that he 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 looks a certain way." Right? Why? Why does that matter? Why is I mean, that? I'm amazed. I'm amazed that you do what you do. Like, it's still like, you know, without me sounding super fucked up. How do you do the things you do with what you got? It's, it's fucking crazy. It's, it's fucking insane. Like, I've listened to uh, Let Me Down's album, that Tacoma's for Lovers album, so many fucking times. And it's just like, how? Well, we, it, well, go go to the show on February fifth and find out, dude. I was actually gonna say there's a, you know, I probably have to work that night. Who knows? But I actually uh, there was another show that I was thinking about going to. It's a Ramones cover band over One, here two, three, in, in Vancouver. No, it's uh, I can't remember what they. I would have to look them up. 
but like it's it's like a Ramones cover band. It's like, oh, that sounds fun. And then you fucked me up with that. I'm like, damn it. But uh, yeah. I would I. I would invite. There's a uh, a Ramones cover band here in Tacoma. They're called One Two Three Four, and I would. They played one one year on my birthday, and you know me, I'm a huge Ramones fan. Right. You know, I I've actually become somewhat of an association with uh, Marky Ramone. Uh, my old roommate and his brother were his backing band uh, for Marky Ramone years ago, and I've heard stories about Marky Bell. And I'm just kind of like, you know what? Like the dude's the dude's a legend to me. The dude is one of those. He's one of the guys that I've looked up to, but like I don't idolize. I'm just kind of like, he knows what he's doing. He's good at what he does. He's a one trick pony. He's he can only really do the Ramones. Yes, he was in the Misfits for a bit. Yes, he's done other things too. But like. He's he's Marky Ramone. He's he's a Ramone. He will always be a Ramone. When so, did you uh, when did you move to Tacoma? I moved up here April first, two thousand nine. Okay, so you probably missed when Marky Ramone was doing a tour and as just Marky Ramone. That was and that doing was the Ramone the, set with Jet City Fix. Like, yes, at so Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, so the Jet City Fix guys, the bass player and the guitar player. Actually, the right after that, then ended up touring with Marky uh, because the, the old bass player from Jet City Fix was my old roommate. No and his, shit. His brother was the dude who actually recorded our album. Like, I, 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 I wonder what happened to those guys. Like, so they were they were so like there were so many bands that I enjoyed when I was growing up, getting into like the local scene and all the shit. Yeah. Jet, Jet City Fix was one of them. There was a couple other bands that I don't like to say that I enjoyed because they turned out to be garbage, but Fair enough. Jet City Fix was one of those fucking bands that like I really enjoyed. And I, I always think, what the fuck happened to them? So Justin, the bass player, ended up going into a band. Uh, they were called True Holland at one point. They were called, uh, what were they called before that? It was uh, Basic Radio before that. Um, they then ended up turning into Varsity Week. They actually were uh, supposed to be like a big band at one point. Um, and so, but he also was in a band called Fall from Grace. So the guitar oh, player, shit. yeah. So the guitar player and the bass player from Jet City Fix was in Fall from Grace, and they ended up doing. Uh, a bunch of stuff with them for a lot of years, toured and all that stuff. That was, you know, um, and then uh, the guitar player now just does audio recording um, instead of playing music. He he doesn't, uh, I mean, he jams with people, but he he recorded, yeah, so he recorded to, uh, to Go Moons for Lovers. Um, so that's, that's your, there's your Jet City fix right there is that's the wow. guitar player actually recorded my drums and guitar and uh, a couple of vocals on or a few vocals on the album. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's where that, that's where it kind of goes full circle into having Tacoma, I guess you would say like legends uh, are still doing their thing. They're just doing it not where they were before um actually one of the last phaser shows was with jet city fix um we played at dano's bar it was actually on i think it was new year's or new year's eve and we played with uh jet city fix and that was it then after that we just kind of phasers on kill just kind of just stopped doing anything because unfortunately well fortunately or unfortunately however you want to look at it Chris went to MXPX, yep. and which is totally I mean, fine. good for him. Good for yeah. him. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's so funny. Like, like you know, you think of like the bands that are like you know known as that three piece band. I mean, you think about Green Day, and they have um, what's Jack his White from Ban Banner Pilot. Was it Banner Pilot? Yeah, Banner uh, Banner Pilot. His name is Jack. Uh, Jack I, I think it's Jack White. But it was the same. No, no, his name is Jack know. White. Yeah, his name is or, or Frank White, something like that. Okay, but it's the same like Nirvana. You their their second guitar player was Pat Smear from the Germs. Second, and second, 
their that Pat Smear was their their second rented. They actually had a guy named Chad who was their or uh, Chad was the drummer. Sorry, Steve. God damn it! With your fucking musical knowledge stuff, Jesus. Uh, sorry. No, I'm just saying, Pat yeah. was the most like like most popular one that From was the like, yeah, but which is. I saw the Germans right. back in the day, and holy shit! Let me just say, when they had Shane West doing his thing, as Darby, that pretty boy, that pretty boy motherfucker was was a you know I met I so I went and saw the Germans back in the day, and uh, it was after you know what they do with Secret, and they were playing at Numos, and they went from all ages to twenty one and over the day of show. I ended up buying tickets from my buddy Puddles, and you know going and shit, and I met Shane West. What did I talk to Shane West about? A walk to remember. I, I remember you telling me about this. <laughs> literally, I didn't talk to him about. I, I maybe talked to him about you know him playing Darby Crash for like the, the little millisecond, but I talked to him about a walk to remember for about an hour, and we went into the t- the the Moe's bar or whatever, had some shots, and I, I I I went fanboy on this motherfucker. He goes, can can you just can you just stop? Like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I'm just, I'm starstruck because you're in my favorite rom-com or my romantic movie. And, uh, I, I no, I get it. I, I don't think I've ever like fanboyed out with anybody. Um, just because like a lot of the guys that I've met, I'm like, you know what? They do what I do. So I'm not yeah. really going to be like, so like, um, but there's there's been those moments where like I've met some legendary players and I've been like, dude, you're a solid dude. Like you're a solid person. Like this is cool. Like I you want to go have a beer? Like that's, yeah, that's kind of like, like that's one of my questions I want to ask. Like, who is the coolest musician or band or whatever that you have met? And then part two, who is the worst? Who was the shittiest person that you were so disappointed in that you thought they were going to be way radder than they actually were? I got a couple. Uh, well, actually, I really got a few with the raddest, and I probably have like one with the worst. Uh, one of the probably one of the most unexpected, I guess, for me was uh, when I used to work at a big chain music. Uh, equipment store company. I won't mention their name. I love how uh, you have have avoided naming companies, but I can tell you right now, it was probably Total Wine that you're talking about, big name yeah. store, and probably Guitar Center. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, you're both. You're correct on both. Um, yep. But, uh, so when I work there, uh, Gutter Mouth comes in into my work, and yep. I recognize this there, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, dude, and. My one of my drum guys at the time was he was like fanboying out to the point where I'm like, dude, go clock out, go in the back, shut up. Like, yeah. you were like, um, it was to the point where, like, I walk up and I'm like, I'm like, what's up, dude? You're, you're from Gutter Mouth, and he's like, yeah, like, what's up? And I'm like, what are you guys doing here? And he's like, oh, we're playing tonight. I'm like, where? And he's like, oh, we're playing at Hell's Kitchen, I think. I'm like, I don't know if I can get off work in time, but I would love to see you guys. And he goes, well, what's your name? And I went, why? And he goes, I, I was just like, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Garrett. I'm, you know, I, I work here. I'm one of the drum guys. And he goes, what's your last name? And I tell him my last name. And he goes, how do you spell it? He writes it down on a piece of paper, and I'm like, G U exclamation point. Like, I had to look up what your fucking name was, like how to spell just, your last name multiple times. You could have just asked. I know. Well, I was setting up the video, and I, I had to so, I had to look it up multiple times. Just go to my go to my Facebook. You'll find. I it. did, but I had to look at it like 15 fucking times to make sure I spelt it right. It was fucking <laughs> hilarious. Um, so he writes it down. I'm like, what's this for? And he goes, cool. You're on the guest list. you got two more people. Dope. If you want to, I'm like, that's cool. Like, Dope. okay. Um, one of my best as a musician moment, um, I, when I lived in Arizona, this is about 2004 to 2006 ish. Cause I, I can't really remember it. What like, it was within those two years I was uh, auditioning with a lot of bands at that point because I was I was done playing the little bar scene and I was just like screw this, 
I want to be a drummer for the rest of my life. I don't, I don't want a day job. I just want to be a drummer in a band. So, uh, this band I was in, we were called box cutter and, uh, in Arizona, which I know there's another kind of a box cutter up, uh, up in, uh, up in the Pacific Northwest, yeah, yeah, in this area. yeah, yeah, and yeah, I know about that box cutter. So, but that's not that box cutter. It was another. No, I, I but, figured. I figured. Yeah. Um. So, but at the same time, I was constantly doing like Craigslist and like MySpace and stuff like that all the time. To where I was like, I just want to be a drummer. I auditioned for like some pretty big bands at that point, like at least in the Arizona scene, where bands were like, "Dude, you're really good," but you know, you don't look the part. And I'm like, who gives a shit what I look you're like? You're hiding like, behind a fucking drum, drum kit. Like, your bass drum is almost as tall as you fucking are. Like, that is a big-ass fucking bass drum, dude. Like, I don't understand that thing. I don't well, understand my, that. Yeah, my like, new I kit. I watch your my, fucking yeah. videos, and it's just like, what the fuck is that? That, that? That's a John Bonham drum kit right there. That's that's a That's literally my John Bonham Led Zeppelin Kick drum How right big there. is that motherfucker? Twenty six inches. Where's my fucking? Hold yeah. On. Look, Hold look on. do a tape measure. measure. Yeah. Do twenty six inches. It looks way bigger on mine. It looks way bigger in the fucking videos. That is a big ass fucking kick drum. Now sit. Now sit down and do that upwards. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, let me go. No, I'd yeah. probably be about this height. Holy shit. So that and I'm I'm five foot nine. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, it it literally is basically it goes right above my kneecap while I I'm think playing. Maybe your angles are a lot different because it looks way bigger. Uh he well that was also on a stage that was pretty high, so he's doing it from below, so he's doing angled up, so it's gonna look a lot bigger. I meant on like your TikTok videos. This thing looks like it's probably like I that's I'm the, I'm doing right in front of it like yeah, I'm I probably doing, go about three feet big. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, twenty six inches. I mean, it, normal bass drums are twenty two, so that's only a four four inch difference. That's a big fucker, dude. That's what John Bonham played. Damn. So uh, and that's not is that that's not including the shell though. No, that's the shell. That's actually the, that's the shell. That's the shell, yeah. It's twenty six. That's still a big fucking kick drum. Holy shit! Yeah, and I probably like, and I, uh, it sits about. I sit probably where my my uh, my leg is probably maybe about like this. Yep. About that, I I used to sit like this, and it was so uncomfortable. And I used to sit where my 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 leg was like this, which was uncomfortable. But now I've learned, like, if I sit just like that. I can hit as hard. Like sound, sound people hate me, but they love me because of how like how hard I kick and how like aerodynamic my hands are. And that's not because of my sit, like my my birth defect, you know, in many quotes. Yeah, let's uh, call it a birth defect. Birth defect. Uh, I just hit really, really hard because I can't hear myself, so I hit harder so I can hear myself. So, um, but yeah, so I got a, a 26 inch kick. I've always wanted one ever since I was a kid and I finally got one. So, um, That's one insane. of the, one of the other, so one of the, as a musician, I'll circle back to it, um, was I was in this band called box cutter and I was kind of wanting to get, you know, in a more bigger band, I guess at that point, um, uh, this dude comes up. His name was Mike, Mike Gunn. Uh, and he hands me a CD and he goes, learn these songs. And he was like, I'll contact you in about a week. He goes, I have your info. He's like, learn these songs. Uh, we have a, a show. He goes, I can't really talk about it. At that point, he was kind of being hush-hush. So I was like, whatever. Um, Box Cutter was kind of not, they, they really didn't want to do much anymore. Uh, they were like a garage punk band. Nothing. I mean, we did a uh, sweater from Weezer, you know, that was kind of their vibe was that kind of punk, which, which well, is fun. I, I, fucking sweater. Let me just say sweater song. That was one of the songs that I got in trouble with in fifth grade at a uh, field trip to the news tribune. Look, 
I, I screamed that shit at the top of my lungs. Like, I, Weezer is my shit. The, I dig it. Like, but at that time, it was, it was, you know, it was still kind of one of those party songs. You know, you play at a bar. Well, we, we literally played, I played one show with this band. We played to literally my mom, my brother, the bar staff, and the other bands. And that was it. That was literally who we played to. Um, and so this dude, Mike, shows up, he hands me a CD. And at this point, you know, it's still CDs. Uh, there was no uh, uh, streaming services at that point or iPad or iPods or whatever. And so he's like, hey, learn these songs. So I'm like, okay. And I knew who they were. I knew who the band was. Um, I think I answered one of their uh, their stuff at one point. And I think they were like, yeah, you're really not our like style, but the fact that I had already auditioned with them and learned their songs as quick as I did, that they were like, Hey, so here's the reason here's what's going on. Long short, the long story short of it, our drummer was put in jail. We have a show with like a pretty big band and we're doing direct support. And I said, okay, um, how much am I getting paid? And <laughs> oh, oh dude, I, anytime, this is the thing. If you ask me to play drums on an album or anything, I go, "How much are you willing to pay me?" I don't do this. I don't do this shit for free, right? Like, yes, it's my hobby, but I also have to take time to learn the songs. I have to take time off work to then record if I have to. I have to. I, I have equipment to pay for. I have sticks to pay for. I have drum heads to pay for. Like. If if you want me on your record, we we need to talk. We need quick you know, question. Your, what what size six do you have? Uh, I actually play uh, Pro Marks. They're called the the TX five uh, A P R. So oh I'll my. so to most I, drummers, I was I always five B. Like when I would when I would dick around on drums, I had to have five Bs in my fucking. Five Bs are a little a little big for me, um, but I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I well, even if I had normal normal hands, five Bs would still. Be I don't normal. know why they just felt so fucking. And that's like, fine. I, I, and I'm it, not a drummer. It, Let me just say, I'm not a fucking drummer. It's just I enjoyed five Bs. Anyways, keep on going where you're fucking going. So, so the long short of it, basically, so they had asked me to learn about sixty different songs. We only played like thirty of them. I did. I learned their songs in three days. I had one practice with them, and then the show. And legitimately, it was the biggest show I've ever played at that point in my life. There was about close to, uh, I want to say there was like five hundred to six hundred people in this oh, in this place. Yeah, it was huge. It was. It was uh, we played with a band called Fayuka, for Bill Stahl. Um, uh, ten foot crutch. Uh, it was us. We were called Last Action Zeros, and then we played. And the the headlining band was Authority Zero. Well, oh my God, Authority Zero. There's so, another story I have too. So, so well, this is what will, will kind of go circle back to my biggest thing for them. Uh, a few weeks before this, I see them play what was called Edge Fest at a, an arena which is like thousands and thousands of people. I it, Like the size of the Tacoma Dome. I see these dudes headline this show. And it was, the, I mean, it was the Hives. It was uh, OK Go. Uh, it was, um, uh, I forget who the other band was, uh, Story of the Year. And... Wow. Uh, uh, there was another band I don't remember. They they're not big anymore, so it doesn't really matter. And oh, uh, and the other band we played with was a band called Redfield, which was a, a kind of a legendary Southwest kind of punk band. And so, but anyway, so the long story. I see them, and then a few weeks later, I'm literally opening up for that that band. Now I was in. I just got out of high school. I knew who 
authority was in high school. I knew who they were because my buddies were, you know, I've known who they were since 2001, 2002. I get to play a show with them. They're about 21 to 22 at this point. I'm like 18, I think, 18 years old, something like that, 17, 18 years old. And their guitar player, Bill, I go backstage and he keeps handing me Jack and Cokes all night. Like, and I'm like, dude, I'm not old enough to drink. And he's like, I don't care. Here you go. Like, th this was basically, I'm just like, this is fucking awesome. This, this is debauchery and it's like, it's finest. And um, I remember, like, somehow I remember bringing a chick backstage that was into me. Her name was Sarah. That's all I remember about this, this person. Her name was Sarah, and she was into me. She wanted to meet Authority, and I'm like, oh, well, come with me, come backstage, and I'll introduce you to them. And she's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. Well, nothing happened. She stole my hoodie that night, which was, I was really pissed off about it. Uh, but um, Girls in hoodies. I, let me just I say, don't get it. That was always like that big thing growing up. It's like, yeah. you got a hoodie? No, nope, yeah. bitches are stealing it. Yeah, yeah still, yeah. So, um, Years later, I end up moving up here, and I've seen these dudes off and on like so many different times, you know, just hanging out with them. And they're the reason I don't drink Jaeger anymore, is because oh. of 40 Zero. Um, I partied with them actually when they came up here when it was still the original guys. Um, I they played at the Hell's Kitchen downtown, yep. And uh, I was actually just talking about that show with uh. Somebody who like somebody I'm friends with like on Facebook. I met them in Portland at a Teenage Bottle Rocket show. They actually opened up that show, and I was actually having a conversation with him recently about you know Authority Zero. I, that was a great show, but I have a story about that shit. I have are, a very. Are, are you talking about the one in Tacoma? Yeah the 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 Hell's Kitchen show in I have the, the ticket was, stub somewhere. The, but it was at it was at the downtown Hell's Kitchen, yeah, and uh, I was there. There was a situation that happened with um, the skinheads. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. no, 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 no. Sorry, not the skin. The boneheads. The, the boneheads. The Let me the just say, heads. okay. Yes. So I met. I know this exactly dude who, who you're talking about. Who worked at a tattoo parlor up the way? Uh huh. And um, I, you know, enough drinks in me. I I didn't think anything of it because like he didn't give off that vibe. You remember the sound guy? Tick. Or what was his name? Tic Tac. Tic, tic Tac. Okay, so I'm talking. I, want, with, I wanted to knock his teeth in at one point. Listen, Tic Tac was cool and all, but he he, was Tic -Tac. he he said some shit that he shouldn't have said to me, and I basically i I shut that that shit down real. I don't quick. know if he had a filter. Like, I I, he, I I he was one of those people like I had to be careful around, but he was also like somebody that could be good people to have on your side if anything it, if you know me and you say things i'm fine with it but if i don't know you and you don't oh, know me you and you know. say some things that's where like i'm like who are you and why are you saying this i was able and to if you build don't, a, a friendship yeah. with a uh, relationship with take back before give me, shit talk yeah. happened yeah yeah you, me and you can shit talk. I shit talk about, you know, when we text each other and stuff like that, we shit talk. That's fine. But, yeah. like, but if there's a certain point where it's just like, all right, dude, like, you need to back off. And he yeah. wouldn't. And I basically, you know, I told him, I said, dude, if you don't shut up, I'm going to knock your teeth in. I mean, he was also, right. like, what, five foot three and you were, yeah, he was, you were five he, foot yeah. nine. Well, and... that's why he was called Tic Tac. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. So I was having a conversation. See, I didn't know. I didn't know that these motherfuckers were there. Yeah. So I'm having a conversation with this dude that works at a at a tattoo shop up the way on um, what was it Park, oh, Pacific, what? on Sixth Avenue? So, six he was out. he was on Pacific. And oh, okay. So, uh, he was talking about like he was with a group of friends and shit. Um, and I didn't realize that this person was a shitty person. Yeah. Like, I thought he was just one of, you know, like, somebody that I could get. He had fucking eyeliner on. And yeah. so I was like, oh. So um, he's hanging out with these dudes, and Tic Tac comes up and whispers something in my ear. Let me just say, I'm shit housed. I am absolutely yeah. shit housed at this show. 
and he says something in my ear and all i can say or i all i can remember is uh you better watch out you're fucking up so i'm talking to this dude about getting tattoos his buddies are like you want me to show you the uh you want me to show him the work that he gets done or that i got done and little little shit was like go ahead pulls up this fucking pant leg and the giant like the biggest fucking swastika area like it was fucking i know know exactly who you're talking about it was scary as shit and like okay so i got this little shithead with the eyeliner this big ass motherfucker another big ass motherfucker and their two wives yeah and um he pulls up his fucking pant leg and i go huh (laughs) <laughs> okay, I have told people this story and they've gotten really irritated with me because I use a specific word. Yeah. Um, it, it rhymes with a gag. Yeah. But I go, I go, huh? I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize I was talking to a Hitler fag here, and they like they got buck. Their wives got buck, and I'm just like. I'm going to go now. Go fuck yourself. Tic Tac is at the bar fucking laughing his ass off. And I just fucking run. I was out of there. I shouldn't even drove. I you realize I, would, I, I was there. I well, so. Were you, well, wait, which group were you with, though, buddy? So I was by my. Well, I was there with the authority guys. That's that's who a, I was it's with. A, it's a joke because of the Broken Oars story. Well, um, no, no, no. The Broken Oars. <laughs> okay. So if we're going to get into that. So. <laughs> Long story. So, I don't care for boneheads. I don't. I, I I've heard the story from Brandon from Doctor No. With that, there was that show that happened in Tacoma before they played, and and Brandon Cruz was always like, I I I've been friends with these guys forever, and what the fuck happened? And it was just like, oh shit. Long story short, <sighs> don't cross somebody who. I I do you I, need to word this separately in a I, in a private form? Uh, I'll put it to you this way: Don't fuck with somebody who's been in prison. That that's all I have to say, because they they don't they don't have the same sort of right and wrong that that somebody who's never been to prison has that same mentality. We don't, uh, they don't think the same way we do uh, now. Not an excuse, but it's not, but, but also I've known this dude to be, this dude will have my back. If someone says something to me in the wrong way, I, I can handle myself. I don't have a problem with, with you know, and I, I don't choose violence. I would rather just yeah, be like, hey, let's shake hands. I, let's I let's walk it. away. Let's just, you know. But this is a dude that, like, but me and him have gotten into it to where we're literally, like, nose to nose, like, yelling and screaming. At, at, I mean, we're spitting in each other's mouth at this point. You know, at, w- there's only been one point that's ever happened. He's respected me more... And I respect him more because I'm not going to back down. You don't tell me to do something that I can do and cannot do. I don't care who you are. He's the same way. We're very stubborn that way. But Ike and those guys, with the with that band, we were not a... Dude, there was two Mexicans in that band. So for him to be a what people considered a bonehead he's not a bonehead he was just a following there was a, there was a following, a following yeah. that happened and i understand like how it happened yeah it just sucked that it happened at the wrong fucking wrong time, time. Yeah. and it, it it literally led to a whole bunch of shit now i mean well, here's the thing with it, right? So you're going to always, no matter what, at any punk show we ever go to, you're going to have that small percentage of boneheads and skinheads at the show. Now, I will argue tooth and nail to somebody the difference between the two. And yeah. I will always back a certain group over the other. I will never back boneheads, ever. I will. I don't agree with them i will never agree with them i think that they are wrong i think that just because 
the way someone looks and the way that their skin color is, you cannot tell me any different. They are a person. They are a people. You okay. cannot tell me that they're less than because of the fact of the way they look. Sorry, but that's that's just not how I that's not how I was raised, and uh, I I will always I have skinhead friends now, yeah. and and we and the thing is is that's not a negative thing. Again, it comes down to like we were talking about earlier with the politics things. You have to know both sides before you can say something about it. Like you can't just be one-sided with an argument that you don't know a hundred percent of you can't and it's it goes around with everything you talk about from music to politics to food to cars to the weather to uh uh it's all it's all an opinion it's not facts and that's where like you get people who only have their opinion about a uh, race or whatever. And I think what's wrong now is so many people are so, they get so offended by the littlest things nowadays instead of just listen, just, just listen. And it's even with the whole, like, we'll even get into it with like the COVID thing. Just listen. That's all you have to do. Like, don't be one-sided with it. Just listen to what people are saying. Like, I don't agree to disagree with any of it. Like, I'm literally, I'm stuck in it with everybody else, you know? And I think it's it's messed up, you know, that there's a lot of stuff going on, but people just need to listen. And that's where a lot of people nowadays have decided they don't want, they don't want to listen anymore. They want... They want to be the ones that their own, their opinion is fact. Unfortunately, your opinion is not fact. And it's, it's kind of hard when like there's certain opinions that people will like like say is it's like that they'll die on that hill. Yeah, they will die on that fucking hill. Like I will die on the hill that Blink One Eight Two is the the greatest punk or uh, pop punk band that's ever lived. But like. It, there's certain people that will die on the hill of just oh don't you fucking don't you fucking do it. What is a better band than Blink One Eighty Two, son of a bitch? Descendants, Green Day, pop, pop punk, Jawbreaker. Band. I I'm not disagreeing with you. They're one say, of. The... I will say like Scott Rayner. As the okay. drummer of Blink Way Two will always be like top shit compared to Travis Barker. Uh, but that's just yeah, I was peeing. Yeah, I was peeing out back. Yeah. Oh, you had a pee break and didn't even tell you. Oh, I, I I tried to do the. Do you not see the private chat? I even said, raise your hand if you see this. I got to pee again. I'm putting oh, you on the big screen while I pee. That's the thing that popped up in the corner. I I was just talking my head off. So it's okay. It's okay. Like. I notice when I, when you go just on me, I'm like, okay, he's stepping yep, away. I, I mute it. I go on you, and uh, yeah, we yeah, go from that's there. That's fine. That's fine. Do, have we got any more comments or anything, or just everybody? No, no. It's literally me and you, and hopefully people will watch later. And uh, okay. we've, we've kind of almost hit that two-hour mark. I never expected to go that long. It's, it's just kind of fun chatting with you. But before we – like, I'm thinking about, like, you know, we got to end this soon. You got to yeah. go to bed. You got to work in the morning. I've got one we, more beer. We are gonna like I'm I'm shooting for Mondays. I'm shooting for Mondays and I'm thinking you might be like, the like I, so I can I can have up to six people. Okay. So before I have to upgrade, because I'm using the free version. I, I will do a whole thing later where I ask people for money so I can upgrade. But uh yeah, I, I mean get, get I, a I Patreon wanna, for it. What's that? Get a Patreon for it. No, there's literally a thing like I, I mean, people can just give me Venmo money. It's like oh, okay. $20 a month annual or $20 a month uh, for a special deal or it's a whole shit. Anyways, so, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. Marquitos, I wanted him to be a part of it because he was like my like the person I talked to about this to start this fucking thing. But he he works. You, you remember when. Uh, you guys were doing. I was watching one of your guys' TikToks, and I actually think I gave you the name to where I literally was just like, "Oh, you guys should do a podcast called like 
beards, beers, and bullshit. Or I think I called it like beards and bullshit. I think is what I yeah, called it. Exactly. And and this is still a working title. And some even like uh, one of my buddies, Steve. He's in this uh, punk band called Steve versus the Volcano. It is very street punk. He goes, "Hey, when I grow my beard back, can I can I be a guest?" I'm like, "Beards aren't a requirement. This is just like the the title that I am set with. Beards, beers, and bullshit. Like yeah. it's gonna be great when I do my thing with Aaron. It's like, oh, he's sober now and he doesn't have a beard anymore. That guy used to have an amazing beard, though. He actually has a so." Uh, me and him, I've known Aaron for god seven, eight years now, something like that. The funny thing is, is I, I met Aaron. Aaron used to be in this, um, this, I mean, I wouldn't even pistol call it for a paycheck. He pistol for a paycheck. He was like the like my influence of playing music, and I've given him so much. shit. Why is it pistol for a paycheck available online anywhere? Um, it's the same thing with phasers. Like you cannot find exactly, phasers. Exactly. Exactly. I can't. YouTube is yeah. the only place you can find it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I oh. have a whole list of questions for Aaron about about so, pistol. So but here's I've known the Aaron for fucking ever. So the funny part was the first time I ever met Aaron, he had real like long like longish hair. Oh yeah. And you know he you know hey buddy what's up like what's going on like. <laughs> Look, when he was like, skinny too, right? When he was uh, fucking skinny, skinny ish, no, ish. He he's because he's a big dude work. now. He's a fucking yeah. big dude. I love the dude. The dude is done. Oh, I love him to death. I will out. never say anything bad about him. He is. He's been like literally. The guy has been like one of my like. Heroes he's my brother. He, he's my brother. He he oh, will yeah. like any like any time I get to hang out with him or any of the dudes from either success or even from the drowns like. Yep. I like absolutely like I love those dudes. Like every time yeah. I get to hang out with them, what's up? Did we get uh, what? What's up? What? No? Oh, sorry, huh? everything cool? Uh, I'm you, were, you, were, you were just like, bye. I was like, but no, like uh, there was one day I got to so about the time that he stopped drinking, um, him and I went to uh, a pizza place. It was his breakfast. It was my dinner. I was just up in Seattle. And I was just like, I'm up in Seattle. Like, where is the... So, I don't eat meat. I okay. My guitar player gives me shit because I still eat cheese, but I don't eat, like, any sort of dairy. My old roommate eggs. was that way, too. My yeah. old roommate was that way. I, I don't eat meat, but he, he's, he always gives me shit for being, like, he calls it a vegan. Um, and so, Aaron and I, uh, Aaron was like, hey, like, I'm willing to hang out. Like, where are you at? And I'm like, oh, like we're up in this area, and I don't know where to eat. And he was like, oh, there's this place called Sizzle Pie. Let's go hang out. Ooh. And I'm like, dude, I would love to hang out with you. Like, you know, we already had played a show together when it was Phasers and Success. So I'm like, let's She's let's inside. let's do this. She's you know, no, you're good. And uh, so at this point, you know, normally I don't have the beard. I yeah. this is my it's weird I, it's weird because I like I see all these fucking pictures I tried to find a picture like I was looking through all the pictures I'm like I know Stump has a beard right now but I I wanted to do like the fancy fucking mustache and I'll ugh. get one I'll get another professional one done with me with just the mustache up so this is my off season so oh yeah I'm, not, no, I'm about to do the mustache thing so here I'll, soon, I, I actually so on the I have some wax for you so if you come on the fifth I have wax in your koozie. That I will, I will deliver to you personally. You, you don't have a choice. You, you are. I, picking, I, I might have to work. Tell your boss you have you have to have the day off. You have yeah. enough time to get the, to schedule the day off. Have to, You're I'm not. I'm checking the calendar. I'm checking the calendar right now, literally right now, to see if we have anything planned. If I don't have to work the pub, all right. Uh, but I will request that day off right now. And get, and uh, you are picking up Marquitos. Or make him take a bus or whatever he has to do. <laughs> I talked to Marquitos last week because he has Tuesdays and Wednesdays off. I was I was kind of drunk last Monday. And we were talking about like Kevin Smith movies and shit. I was like, Mark, you want to come over right now and just watch Kevin Smith movies? He's like, I don't think Allison would be happy. Wait a minute. How drunk are you? Drunk enough to know this is a good idea, but sober enough, enough to know that I can drive. Yeah. So, and I would love to, like, he, he and I have had some conversations about punk rock and just, he's such you know, a good he, dude. 
he, he's he's from the east coast so it's always funny i always give him shit every time he'll like when we drink together uh like when we've done his uh done the tiktok stuff like it's always funny to me because uh, his east coast accent comes out <laughs> it, it does and yep. but i like but i love the dude mark's actually a good dude i've actually it's crazy he's because nice. uh, his his grandparents actually lived in my hometown. Really? Yeah. So that's like the weird part. Like it, it's, I actually know people that know his grandparents. Like my family knows his grandparents. Huh. That's how, yeah, that's how small my, my hometown, but anyways, that's a whole other thing. But um, I would love to have him on here, especially if we can get like, if I can ask, friends of of mine that are musicians that are pretty big you, you know punk musicians or even guys in the bearding community to be a part of this or even dudes that are in the the beer community to be a part of this too yeah. to like you it would be to where i would let you guys know ahead of time and be like hey so and so is going to be on this just don't fanboy out make sure you guys have your questions like all that kind of you know but it, like it's february 5th right yeah, February fifth. It's the Saturday. I'm sending the uh, request now, because I would love to do like the whole. I I would love to stick to like talking about music. I would love to stick about like you know, you know if if you drink you drink if you you know all this shit. But I would love to stick to talking about music. Yeah. And I'm looking for like I don't want to say that I'm I want to use people for that in, but. I would love to be able to use people for that and to be able to set up interviews with musicians and shit. Like, honestly, as much as I don't like the guy, I would love to interview Mike. I would, I would love to interview Mike. I can, I can, I can try to make that happen for you. I mean, or at least I would keep my personal things out of it, but I might mention about how he would avoid going to certain bars if a certain person was there because anyway, anyways, I would love to be able to do that kind of shit, but he might be okay with that just because I would, I would, I would talk to him ahead of time to see if I could ask these questions. Like I asked Aaron, is there anything I cannot say? I know there's certain stuff I won't talk about that. I know about his life, but I mean, it's the same shit. So, like even with me, I'm a pretty open book. Like yeah. there's there's certain things that like I've done in my past that it's it's you know yeah I was in a band with someone who it was yeah. not the greatest person in the world, and I didn't want to talk about it, but it, it it came up. Yeah, it came up, but you know what? The dude is like he's not he's not fully in my life anymore. But you know what? Like that was a part of my life at one point. Yep, it's not a part of uh, of my life now. I ha- I have a part of my life where I was in a band with a guy who is well, was or is a part of a certain organization that is very popular in our area of yeah no I I get it like yeah th- that's why like so but you know what like we don't need to talk about it because no, really exactly. honest, that's not part of our lives now like also like one of my old bandmates is now in a band that's like famous. And that's, I'm, I'm actually like, the thing is, is I'm not disappointed that I'm no longer like that band is no longer. I'm stoked for him, but you know what? Yeah. Look at what I'm doing. And that's not me like toot my own horn, but like, dude, we got, we got on the Atreyu Twitch channel and we won the best band of that whole thing. Um, I've, I, uh, how many, uh, this is so weird. Like, even in phasers, like, I, I've, in any band I've ever been in, I've never been in any other, my music has never been in any other country. Yep. Ever. I have an endorsement with a drum company. I'm working with a symbol company now. I, yep. that's like my, like, dopest thing I can do is to, that's, I, I want that. That's what I want for my yep. life. Like, I, I want to quit my day job, which I know will never happen, mm-hmm. but like I want to be able to tour and be able to play with these the, these bands that I idolize, and I already have. I've played with you know big bands that you know yep. a lot of people you know, especially in our like scene. The thing is though is like when people get to know me in general, they get to know that I'm a very I'm a, a low key private person. I. Um, you know this. I don't 
I, I'm a very quiet person. I only talk if I'm comfortable. If I'm not comfortable, I don't talk. Like I'm mm-hmm. like it, I'm it's, the same way. Uh, I'm it, so antisocial. I hate it. Well, uh, so I, I'm not antisocial. I just I'm more of a like okay. For example, if you texted me right and you're like, "Hey, I'm in Tacoma. Let's have it." Like I did when when I me and my brother went to Portland. And oh was, yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm, pissed about that. I'm don't still even worry about it. About you're, that. You're, you're totally fine. No, it was, no, like straight up, I was like, "Can I go?" Like, <laughs> I can I can I leave? But we were anyways. I was like, "Oh, oh, Stumpy's in town." Oh fuck, Stumpy's leaving, and the girl I work with, she goes, "I'm sorry." I'm like. <sighs> It's 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 fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but but like my thing, it was last minute. I knew you were yeah. like, and it was like, you know what? It, you you recommended a brewery, which by the way, uh, Killer Brewery that you recommended. I actually dug the the beers that I had. Um, was it really digging the fact that we couldn't bring the dog inside? Oh, you couldn't. But, no, they wouldn't. They told us that we could only bring the dog out on the patio, and it was oh. kind of still kind of, ch- which is fine. I'm not, you know, whatever. But it was the beer was good. The beer me and my brother had, so we, I definitely want to hit that place back up the next time I'm in Vancouver. Their IPA so, is better than a lot of the uh, other things that they have. I'm not. I'm a. I'm a lager amber guy. So we have we have their amber at the bar that I work at, and it's not uh-huh. popular at all. See that it's just it's it's a weird like I'm I'm the select few that when I go to a brewery I go for the loggers and the ales mm-hmm. and the ambers. When every it's so funny because when I see these dudes go for um, when they go for like IPAs, I all I think about in my head is there's that meme where it's just like it's like oh if you're this like certain dude you order an IPA at a bar you're like the the same chick that goes and orders a pumpkin spice latte at Starbucks and it's true because but at the same time like i get it that's their scene that's their like you know that's the the thing they're into so i i can't yeah. hate on it but like i just I can. There's one IPA I actually enjoy. It's uh, the Tropical Haze from um, uh, Silver City out of Gig Harbor. That's oh, yeah. actually like the. City. That's the only IPA that I can actually drink that I'm not like. I don't do that weird like face, mm-hmm. but I stick with lagers and ales. That's why I stick with you know. That's why I stick with Rainier because you know Rainier is it. I I've gotten used to drinking it. Yeah. And but I give you the thing is is I give you shit about PBR, but I mean oh, yeah, I will I will never give anybody shit about their like beer preferences. Well, you, well, you I will just shit jokingly you, I will yeah. I will jokingly do it, you know. Yeah. But Same. Rainier was always my shit. Like I, I loved when I went to Seattle and saw that giant R. I hated when I saw that giant T, but like Rainier was it's always back. like a great the T is back. No, the R is back. Okay, I, I knew the R was back. I think you just said the T was back. I was about no, to no, 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 because it was it was owned by uh, Tolly's. That's why the T yeah. was there. Now it's yeah, I know the by... Tolly's coffee. Ugh. Yeah, I actually I preferred Tolly's over Starbucks, but it was mainly because they actually did everything manually, not automatic, and that's why yeah. it was kind of a guessing game to be like, "Oh, well, is this going to be a good?" You know, cup of coffee this morning, or am I gonna hate this? Yeah. But I, but I had my favorite baristas that I was like, hey, and like I would tell them, be like, hey, it's nothing against her. Like she probably has people that, that like her coffee or his coffee, but I was like, can you do? Can you make my cup of coffee, please? I just mm-hmm. prefer the way you do it because, you know, whatever. Um, but it's you know, uh. And that goes to preference. It goes to yeah. what I like. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, that brewery that you that you told me and my brother to go to, you know, thank it. you. But yeah, dude, it was actually a cool setting. I dug it. Like it was definitely somewhere where if I was back in that area, I would, um, I would totally go. I would go back to it. Oh yeah, it's, it's so a great place. and. I'm a meat eater, and their their Reuben sandwich is fucking. To die I for. here's the thing. So I I'm not one of those to where I will never tell anybody you can't eat meat oh, yeah. around me. 
that's that's hypocritical of me because I was raised on meat. I was raised on killing animals. I was mm -hmm. raised on hunting and stuff like that. So, I that that's to me that's just weird. Like I just it's just what I've done for the past few years. That's what I do for me. I don't do it for anybody else. And you know what? It, that's okay. If I could do it, it's just a little bit too expensive for me. I'm, I'm just going to say. If you it's can't, a little more expensive to eat healthy. It, 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 but you know what? In the long run, is it though? Well, I mean, you got to think. You got to kind of like, you got to really look for that, that special shit. And it's a little bit higher price. Like, if you're looking for the process stuff, yes. But if you're looking for like, okay, you get a ten pound bag of uh, uh, chicken thighs or chicken breasts for ten bucks, or you can get fresh vegetables and rice and quinoa and everything else for under ten dollars, that'll last you for more than a week, and be in a can of beans that's less than a dollar. Like you, like you know what? You gotta but, understand something. You gotta understand something. Not, I don't buy ten pounds of fucking chicken. I don't cook. All right, but, but I'm not gonna fucking buy a whole fucking bag of god, gosh darn fucking like. Oh, I wish I could. <laughs> if if only it would get eaten quick enough. Freaking. Uh, what like kale and like like? I hate kale. I hate kale. kale but I know good. what you're saying. Like it's, like it's, no like um spinach. I like that. Yeah. Like that that spinach leaves. Love that shit. My kid refuses to eat it, but like I'm so like I'm fat and lazy. I go for the quick shit. I will yeah. go for that. See, Anything but I go with the air fryer and just make easy. And it, it, you can still do the same thing with that kind of stuff too. It's, but again, like I said, I'm not going to sit there and tell you how to eat and how to like. It, it, that's none of my business. Like that's right. not. Uh, I again. You know, we're we're me and you were sitting here drinking cheap beer and talking on the internet. Right. Like, uh, what what do what do I have to like? You know, my it's my opinion. You know, especially even with like the, the music stuff we talked about. Like, we can have you know our disagreements on what is the grace of what, which is great because it's the same thing. It's okay. You're you're either A or you're B. You know, so like normally, like you have the beard, which it you know looks good. I normally rock a mustache, which, uh, which actually the end of I think I'm either going to do it the end of February or the end of March. I haven't decided yet. Um, I'm actually playing some, so I'm playing in Portland on the on February 5th, and then I'm playing again. I have to do a flyout date to Yuma with a band called urethane which is the um uh steve cavallero the the legendary skateboarder that's his band dude you should look them up uh they're called urethane it's actually one of right now it's my favorite album and i haven't stopped listening to it um they it, it they almost have like they we let me downs and urethane fit really really well together it's it's very weird how similar but not similar we are. Like I dig that band. We're playing with them down in you. Oh, it's gonna be at the uh, Red. What is it? The Red Room Ale House in Yuma, Arizona, on February twenty fifth. And um, that's probably gonna be our last show for a while until we get something going. Um, but we're also starting to write new material for either. Uh, a, I, I believe we're trying to do another album, uh, which the new stuff is definitely different, but not really different from uh, Tacoma is for lovers. Tacoma is for lovers really happened very quickly and very, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. Like we became a band before the pandemic happened uh, during October to November of 19, um, we, our bass player actually got divorced, uh, at that time, ended up having to move back to Arizona. So we are kind of contemplating, it's like, do we keep this going? Do we, what do we do? Yeah, I was and how the hell that works with, you know, 
So and I'm sorry that we're going so far into you know like no, 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 shit. but no, I'm so curious how it works with you know Tui living up up there and him being there. So how the fuck does it work? So the way we do it is we so we did like the shows this weekend that we had in Tacoma and then the show down in in Seattle. Um, we we basically we try to make it worth our while. To where we've got offered some pretty big shows right now, and it's it kind of sucks because we can't we we just can't do those shows. We we just yeah. can't. So, but here's the good thing about it is if we're getting asked to, it it, it has to be worth our while, but also has to be to where we fit with that that. Uh, show i don't want to play a show with a bunch of metal bands because but at the same time i'm like you know what screw it it's a show if they're giving us a guarantee screw it let's play it like i don't care you know the rest of the guys they that's that's on you know whatever but so the way it works is so when we did the album uh myself and pat did our parts here in washington so the way we recorded it i did my drums first to all of Pat's guitars and his vocals. The uh, we had pre-production, so we actually already had uh, everything else already basically recorded. And it was everything was already to a click. So if there was like a bass intro to anything, I pretty much played to his bass lines with Pat. And then we basically just went off there. And there were some songs. So Tongue Tied is one song that actually me and Pat just straight up was like, hey, it's an idea. Let's just go through it and see how it goes. Tongue Tied, I believe I did in in one take from start to finish. And that's literally, I think that's the one song I think I did to one take. And I was like, that I'm done. I don't need to read. I don't need to do that song <laughs> i don't need to do that again uh the rest of the, so pat did his stuff separately with guitar stuff and vocals and then paul did all of his stuff down at underdog studios which is run by the vocalist and guitar player of a band called miles to nowhere down in arizona okay. he did his bass parts and his vocals down there and got mastered uh, with uh, Ty McDonald uh, here at Wine Cellar. Um, okay. Um, and uh, it, it basically... <laughs> Sorry, that was, that was the best way for me to fucking shut <laughs> up. Just, just, you should leave that up. I have to pee pee. Like, uh, just go for it, because I have to at some point as well. So, um, well, Sorry, we're almost at the end, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, well, how about this? Well, I'll get to it, and then you can play a song. We can go pee, and then we can come back. How about that? Okay. Okay. Um, so the long short of it, basically, yeah, that's how we did it. Is he ended up doing his stuff down there? We did our stuff here. We released it in July of twenty, and basically from there, we've just hit the ground running, and we've gotten a lot of PR. We've done a lot. Of, I mean, this is my first by myself uh, podcast or video cast or whatever you want to call it that I've done for the band in general. Uh, the rest of the guys do all their stuff and I'm super excited because I want to do more of this stuff. I want to have more publicity for the band. I do other stuff outside of the band, but I want to do stuff like this. This to me is what I think draws people into the band. And that I think is what is exciting so but yeah that's that's where i'm at with that so yeah if you want to play another song i need to go pee as well i need to I, I I realize my mic break. wasn't on if if it comes down to we can do it like a full-on you just talking about music and just a, a simple thing but yes go pee go pee i'm gonna play uh i want to play a song i'm gonna i'm gonna play a song all right you do that and i'm gonna go pee real quick which one are you gonna play next uh, probably, uh, Jameson on Ice. 
Okay, that's our second single. You can also find that on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, Let Me Down is official. Uh, you can get both uh, 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 Tacomas for Lovers and also that on as well. Go pee, dude. Come on. I'm going to go pee. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, cool. Jameson on ice. I was gonna say you can keep playing it. it it's so weird because I have no idea what the fuck it sounds like. But it, playing it, on a little uh, Alexa, like I I really feel like if we ever do this again or when we do this again, there has to be better planning. I will save songs. I will do all that shit. I will. You know what? I gotta have bathroom breaks. Yeah, and when we 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 gotta do it like you said in the. Uh, you we gotta have certain things where you'd be like, hey, so we're gonna go to this certain song. That's yep. our bathroom break. Like I, I, I really wish I would have set up the way I set up with Aaron. Like I have this entire list of what, shit. What what questions are you gonna ask him? I want to know if maybe there's something I can be like. Oh, I want right. to. I want to see. So I really want to know how the name Rev came to be a thing. Um, obviously I'm gonna ask about piss for a paycheck. Okay. I really want to know how success became success after being in the name Rough Chucker. See, I didn't know that. I just knew because, Yeah, they were Rough Chucker for the longest time, and I heard a story. I don't know if you know about the college station uh, KGRG. Yeah. But they did an interview, and uh, they were they, they did a thing. It was like, oh, you know, we were playing shows, and the, 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 vent, or the flyers would always say something stupid, like Slut Chucker or something stupid. But then there was always a story about how uh, it was either Austin or Dave came out after taking a giant shit and just screamed success, and that was that was the thing. I mean, it makes kind of sense. Like it, it. Well, with I mean, he'll probably tell you about Rev. Like it's the same oh yeah thing no with, like like I guarantee stuff. he'll tell me about the Rev name. Yeah. It, it, so there's a story behind how I got the nickname Stump. And it's a really weird, messed up thing. And I'll I'll dive into it real quick just because it'll make sense. So uh, a high school friend of mine, still kind of one of my dearest friends. We have matching tattoos. He's, you know, uh, I've been to both of his weddings, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, his older brother and his older brother's roommate uh, gave me the nickname. And what it was was uh they had this army patch and i i i lost it because it was on that hoodie that the girl stole okay and it said stump it was an actual it was a dude's actual last name his name was stump and at that point i didn't really have a nickname and it just kind of like i wore it as like a badge of honor at that point like right and so that's why when i tell people 
you know me either as my my birth name, Garrett, or you know me as Stump. You do not know me as as both. You know me as one or the other. And you, you had to introduce me to Garrett. You yes. like I I remembered your name was like I knew that I I remembered meeting you as like way back in the fucking day, even though it's like not remembered. But oh yeah, that's that guy. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. It's weird when people like I have a stage name. That's the persona that I have in that stump. Mine that's, was Sloppy Joe. Mine yeah, was Sloppy I know, Joe. I know Sloppy Joe. And I, it sucked when people would still call me that. It's like, oh, Sloppy Joe died. Sloppy Joe but, retired. Sloppy Joe is see, not Sloppy Joe anymore. Stump will always be a part of me because that's that's a that it, it's almost like I took it as like for example like Smelly from No Effects. He yeah. he took it as a as an endearment. You know when you you know when you get a nickname like that that sticks with you, and when people get to know you, it, it's like you either like you know somebody by their nickname. It only there's a Tom Segura. Uh, uh, thing about when it's just like he goes on about the whole thing. It's just like, yeah, I saw Dookie shoes. It's like, do you know what his real name is? Nah, I or no, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I saw that guy, uh, my friend Nami. Do you know what his real name is? Nah, I just know him as Nami. Like, it's it's that sort of thing. Like when you grow up like that, you get a nickname, and that's what people know but you as. Sloppy that's Joe it. was never a good was never a good person that's why I like i i try to say i'm i'm joe sloppy yeah. joe sucked sloppy joe sucked as a person and i get i i totally get that like that's why like it's good that you're you're putting that re- that persona as oh, just yeah. joe back out there as you're just like i know you as joe like i but i know who sloppy joe is like it's yeah. the same thing with like like rev it's weird because like so, like when I met him, he was Rev. Yeah, he wasn't Aaron. He was. Oh yeah, Rev. when I met him, he was Aaron, and it was, it was really weird. He was five foot four. Just hey, what's going on? Yeah. Like yeah. he's the like, sweetest person. Like like I was saying, I was gonna say earlier when I, the last time I saw him, he was in mid conversation. He goes, "Nope," and he stopped to make sure that we could enter. Like that's the kind of person he is. He will make sure that he is acknowledging. His well, you remember no when I when they were playing here in Tacoma and I sent you that yeah. picture and I was like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm hanging out. Like, he was like, who are you sending that to? And I was like, Joe. And he yeah. was like, Joe? Like, and I was just like, our, our buddy Joe. And he was, you know Joe? And I'm like, I know oh, Joe. Like, I have you, I have a story. We were playing a show at, I don't know if you knew what the Red Room was. It yes, was over I know. There. I, I got a concussion at that show, uh, <laughs> at a show there. Yeah. Uh, not not as dope as you think it would be. Um, uh, uh, and just we'll we'll just say that I yeah I got a concussion at that show. Well, there was a there was a show that like my old band was playing. There was a shit ton of hardcore bands, and my old band at that time had turned from like street punk to hardcore. Yeah, and success was playing. They were like the, the they were the black sheep of this fucking thing. And Aaron or they all roll up, and Aaron walks in and goes, "Oh fuck." So I didn't want to do it, but I saw the name Bad Jeans. It's like, oh, I, I there was a recognizable face. I go, yeah. oh, sir, you're about to be so disappointed. <laughs> but, like, we had been through so much, like, throughout the years before that. And he's like, I was so happy to see somebody I recognized. We, besides these hardcore bands that I have no idea who the fuck they are. It was crazy. So, like, we, like, when I was in Phasers, we, we all kind of, like, knew – certain bands and kind of hung out yep. with certain bands, right? And um Rev was that dude that was like you know Rev you it, it's almost like knowing that like you know that I don't even know how to explain it like but you know that dude who everybody not just like certain people but like everybody in the scene knows about this dude and knows this dude i can't say a negative thing about well other than his mustache uh, that's probably <laughs> i love the dude to death 
But like I've given him so many like ways to be like, dude, just grow your mustache in a certain way. Like, and I and I know his his wife. Uh, she's such a sweetheart, and yep. I love them both. One of the like, things, like, I never met Tammy. I know who his ex was, and that's something I'm definitely leaving out of the questionnaire because wait, wait, wait till but, you meet Tammy. Tammy is like she seems very sweet. She seems very fucking sweet. The only way I can explain it, <laughs> she's the female version of Rev. Fuck. Like, and I, I, I love both of. I like, I love them both. Like, they're like the the couple that like they go to a punk show. You, I don't even like. Every time I see both of them, I give them the biggest hug. Like, I right. cannot leave the building without giving both Aaron and Tammy a hug. Like, I just it's can't. It's so funny like, hugging him because he's so little. He's he's so – well, me, he's a little shorter than me. and But I love Rev. Like, Rev oh, is yeah. the dude – like, he – him and I – like, I had a, a, a dental thing, year like, years back that I had to have, like uh, – I had to get a tooth, uh, like, a root canal. And he's like, hey – Hit this company up, and he's like, "You're you work for me." He's like, "Just just tell them you work for me, and like, well, he's like, just this program will help you out." Blah 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 blah. I won't even go into it because it's a whole other yeah. thing. Yeah. And um, he he helped me out. Nobody else in the scene would do that. Like, but that's the type of dude Rev is. Like, and I. We got to play with them one time. I was I was so so excited. I got to play with with success before they, unfortunately, you know, disbanded. Uh, I love every dudes in those bands. I Andy oh, yeah. is like oh, yeah. like Andy is one of my favorite. Other than Rev, Andy is like the. Dude I never ever... I never officially met Andy. Um, like I Andy's knew cool. I knew Sean and David. I met um their old. He he was a guitar player. Or no, he was a keyboard player. Then he was playing guitar before Andy joined. What Sean? I met Sean, Sean a little bit, but like these guys, like I met I, I I was at Dead Baby Downhill years. You know Dead Baby Downhill, right? Yeah. Okay, I was at Dead Baby Downhill years ago, and I have David and Austin behind me, and I just like this some of some of a bitch grabs me, and I just look down, you know, and it's Austin. He goes, "Hey, I know you." I'm like, "Oh." And just think about that years later. It's like, you rock stars are so fucking sweet. But it's, it's the thing is, is those dudes are like the most humble yeah. group of dudes. Like, yeah. me and Rev actually, uh, we wanted to jam together for such a long time. Me and him wanted to put together, we actually have still talked about it. We want to do a. Uh, I, I, we want to do a surf band where it's me, him, and his buddy Lucas, where we yes. wear like like tie dye and like Hawaiian shirts, and we only play like breweries and like 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 backyard. He doesn't want this thing to be anything bigger than really, and he he wants to call it like Rev and the the somethings, the and Renegades. I think that's what he wanted so to call he it. So he did Rev and the Renegades like forever ago, but it was Austin and David. Yeah, and they but, literally played. Yeah, it was like a surf rock version of Success songs, which is yeah. which is funny, which no, is hilarious because. But these are I, but he I, wants to do yeah. like a bunch of songs that he like when he when they started when him and Andy started doing the drowns. I was super stoked on it because, like, I was like, "All right, it's gonna be something more towards what they kind of wanted to to really be into," and it's really a mix of like rock and roll and like punk rock and glam, like not glam rock. It's just glam. Yeah, and and I have so many questions about the drowns because. The Drowns is something completely different. Like, their whole entire, like, persona and everything is just something completely different than what I'm used to with, with Aaron. And it's just like, I, I, I'm very excited to learn about all that. So, like, I haven't been able to play with them yet with, with Let Me Downs, but I'm hoping at some point in the near future 
when they play to like we want to play a show together like that's uh-huh. been like he's been he wants to do it i want to do it and he wants to do it i know the rest of the guys are just like you know we'll just play whatever like but yeah. like that that's my dude that's like like when we played um we played uh jazz bones and it was sold out it was yeah. the it was the fibs uh um uh, who was the second band it was uh oh it was the fibs us success and noise were oh my god so and and noise uh, is a band that i've had arguments about on tiktok here's the thing i met Matt is one of the sweetest dudes I've ever met. So is Nate. Nate is like both of those dudes are the sweetest guys I've ever met. Yeah. And but here's the thing though, like people again associate what skinhead culture is and what mm-hmm. bonehead culture is, and it's they're two different worlds. Yeah. And like I my thing is is like it's like people will say, "Oh, well, you know, noise is a a, a a Nazi band or whatever," and I'm like, "You have no idea what you're no. talking about. You don't know what noise actually is." The like, argument that I had about noise, because you know, Matt being in the military, their old guitar yeah. player, I can't remember his name to save my life, but he was awesome. I loved that dude because he was he was just very like when I was in Red Wine Die, he was just very like he kind of fanboyed, and it was it was a little weird, but um. They were just very normal. And yeah. uh, the thing I, I've had arguments with, uh, with people about, and one of the people in particular um, from uh, Jersey, uh, military does not belong in punk rock. Okay, they can go fuck themselves. Because... Exactly, that's what I said. It's like, you got to think. So people are doing things to better their lives. They have, you know, they're certain like, this is how I'm going to live my life. But I also hate what I'm doing. And so, I, I feel like there's certain like punk rock bands that are just like, are they are they trying to are they trying to say that like punk rock is only supposed to be a liberal thing? Yep, that was kind of like because... the thing I got. It's like you have to hate this, you have to hate this, you have to hate this. It's like, you know, I understand like the whole like punk rock isn't for everybody. There's certain things that will like yeah. we will just like say, oh, go fuck yourself. But yeah. there's also like. There's a lot that it's just like people are just being so closed minded about. And that's like the same thing with how I work, where I work. It's like a lot of my friends are just like you, like they say so okay. much. It's like you're, it's it's a fucked up thing. So with punk rock, okay, we're we're like the people say that we're a subgenre within a subgenre. Okay, we're basically this outcast of an outcast, right? And what what's so weird about it is everybody's welcome nobody has ever been especially at any shows that i've ever been to i've never like i think i've been to maybe one or two shows where like a couple of boneheads have have been there and they try to act all aggro and like but those dudes end up getting their asses kicked and they end up like leaving Fun fact, I had a buddy who was kind of like, you know, the sharp skinhead, and but yeah. he would he would he would go to that point of I would dress as a bonehead just to get in a fight. And I I saw him in a show one time ago, Jake, you son of a bitch. Well, and he see, was just, he was like, just so shit house. He's like, I'm I'm fucking somebody up tonight because yeah. I want to. And that's, you know what though? That's not that's not what sharps are about. Like he he he's what they identify as somebody who is a uniformist who's somebody who wears the uniform as what they're pretending to be and when you that's why like i i don't like dress a certain way because i'm i don't want to be uh i guess i i don't want to be identified as something that i'm not and the thing is, it's like, dude, who cares? Like, it's it's music. It's entertainment. Why give two shits unless it's a political thing? I'm not going to go and watch a, uh, uh, like a, uh, uh, um, a bonehead band because I like that band. 
there are certain bands that I don't listen to because of that specific reason. I'm not going to listen to them because they give off that ideology of that uh, of that style, and that's not what I'm into. I'm into just punk rock because, dude, I want to go to a show. I'm I'm an angst. I was an angst teen. I'm still an angst adult where I want to go to a show and I want to release. Like when I texted you the other day and I was like, hey. You need to go to a show and release some fucking like tension. You need to blow some steam or some shit. I was just looking at that text earlier. Yeah. Like, and and I I said that with all of my heart. I did not mean that in a a, a bad way. I meant that. And I would never. There there are certain things that certain people can say and I will never take the wrong way. And yeah, I, I don't think you're a part of that group that I would take the wrong way. No, yeah, I, and I, exactly what you said. Like it's just the thing is, is if there's a mosh pit, dude, blow off that steam. Like, but see, I don't do that anymore because I I, I am so out of shape and old that I will just look at them and go. <laughs> I remember but, those days, but, but still, like there's still I some enjoy pit. it. Yeah, you it, even still just getting and singing along and getting you just. Horsing your voice for the next day and just be tired and drinking and just whatever else. Like, like uh, last night when we played, I was so excited, even though there was literally the other bands, the bar- the bartender and the sound person there last night. Yeah. I was I was more upset at what happened prior, and I won't get into it because really it's just it's pointless. Wow. Um it, it it well, it's nothing, it's nothing internal with the band or anything. It was just it was just something that really irked me the wrong way for the stupidest reason. Where was and the it, show at? Uh, it was at the Fun House in Seattle. Okay. okay uh, yeah. it, it had nothing to do with the staff. It had, it just it had to do with like some stupid regulation that they have. Um, it just it it irked me the wrong way, and I just felt that it was pointless. I I felt that it was a um, I I believe that they they were not there for the band. They were there for uh, selling alcohol at that point, and I believe they just they addressed it the wrong way. That's my personal opinion. Uh, that does not reflect my band or anybody else that I uh, am a part of. Um, but again, I'm not going to dive into it because really, there's no point to get into it. Yeah, but. Um, I took out my frustration with that on my drums, and guess what? We had one of the best shows we ever had in front of the other bands. Nobody. I I, Nobody. I, 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 I remember those shows. I remember those fucking shows, and those were probably some of the, the greatest shows that I've had. Did I play like shit? Yes. Did I break some shit? Possibly. Did I bleed? Yes. And... I, I understand exactly what the fuck you're saying. I, I we like, but the thing is, is like we're like it's so weird with with this band. Like, I've never had it to where it, it's so weird. Like, we could literally get a flyout date to just anywhere, show up, and do a hundred percent. I've I've never been in a band like we don't practice. Which this is, so this is weird. Like it, it's it's the weirdest. I've never been like like I feel Faith, like you'd probably be that band that we saw in, like online during quarantine, like that they all get together on fucking like Zoom calls and shit, and you just hook up your shit and you just go. No, like I practice by myself. So when you guys see me doing TikToks, yeah. So where, is that? where the fuck is that at? Because that fucking backdrop you have, like, where the fuck are you recording those at? At my studio, I have a, a studio here in Tacoma, and which I'm gonna bring that back. It's not the to... one on Sixth Ave across from the flower shop, is it? It is. Oh fuck! I used to practice there with the disorderlies. I'm in. Uh, remember no, we, I remember we... you asked me if Red White and Die did the thing. I I was never, but this the disorderlies used to practice there. I loved that fucking practice space we had. Yeah, it was so. I hated going to the bathrooms down the hall. Um. They took out all the they took out all the drink the drinking fountains, which is there weird because I didn't know there were drinking fountains. I always had yeah. beer. No, so if if you go where the men's room is, you know those pipes that are out of the wall, those were the it's drinking been a fountains. Long time. 
Yeah, that's wow. that. That's how long I've been there. Like, I remember the drinking fountain. Is it still fucking like sketchy dark? Like, it's not no. dark, but like it's Ooh. very it it's musky. It's kind of ske- like you would think that you'd be walking down it in like a scary movie, and somebody's gonna pop out. No, actually, uh, a lot of the bands that are there and a lot of the artists that are there pretty much keep to themselves. Well, uh, like, I meant, like, the lighting. The lighting just, like, nobody, like, in particular was ever an issue. Like, we used to jam with the people next door to us and just kind of compete, which was hilarious. But just, I'm talking about the lighting. Just, like, everything down that hallway just seems so, like, sketchy and musky and just gross. It's just still- uh well, they've done it to where I don't know the last time you were there, but uh, it's been a long it, time. Uh, they did it to where when you walk in, the lights turn on, and okay. only where you walk. So if you're not walking on like part of the certain building, the lights aren't going to turn on. It only that's it weird. Only, which it, it's kind of nice. It's like if you go to like a storage place, that you know that that's kind of what it does, um, and uh, so. It, it's but like literally i'm my my studio is literally within two like you walk in and it's literally one of the first two doors so it's we're really right up front which is nice because load in load out is super quick and super oh yeah easy. Right. Uh, but uh we uh it, it's in the old red white and dye room which is funny because it's right next door to the old phasers room so I have why... no idea where the fuck Red Wine Die practiced there. That's the fucking thing. Like I was never, I was never a part of that band. If they had that practice space there, yeah. They they told me uh, when I took it over, it was the Red White. Uh, it was Bron- uh, Blanco Bronco, the Red White and Die, and there was some other band that like they, there was like three bands that shared that space. Really, it was when the chick was the drummer in Red White and Die. Raven, yeah. I, and see, that was that was, that was, see uh see I don't know about anything about that though. Yeah, so that was probably way after when you were in the band. Well, I, I joined the band when Raven was like drumming, but Anthony was still drumming. It was a whole transition thing, like it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah, so I know Josh was still in the band at that point before he <laughs> before he went to uh oh, before fucking. he went to uh Hilltop Rats. So that's that's what that's literally the room that I was like, but, but it's, I like the room I'm in the backdrop. It's going to come back. Um, I just haven't moved it from a, from another wall to back to the wall that I'm at now. Um, but I got the library thing because I want to do something different than everybody else. Oh, that does. backdrop was there when you guys got in there. No, I, I bought it off of Amazon, but okay. they gave me the wrong size. Oh, okay. I wanted a bigger, uh, like they said it was 92 inches, but when I got it, it was 46 inches. So, you know, he lied about it when he showed it to me, basically. Right. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's fine because it works, you know, when I when I do my TikToks. But um, I'm going to bring that back oh. and going with the TikTok stuff, like, it's crazy because, like, I've had a couple of TikToks go viral mm-hmm. just off of me playing drums. But, like, it's weird because, like, it, like TikTok is not really known for that. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's really weird. It, like... The stuff you do. Like, by the way, that book that you have, my brother... Oh, my God. My fucking... The uh, the uh, yeah. the wreck this journal. Okay, yeah. so my my son got one for Christmas, and I've always wanted one. There was a guy I used to follow on TikTok. Uh, I unfollowed him because he got famous because of this book, and uh, he kind of turned into a shitty person. Like he was just boring, like you know, like the shit I do. But my kid wanted one or had one, and I wanted one, so I got one. My wife, there's a whole entire like thing that this lady does that is just so batshit fucking crazy just the most random shit that my I had brother when she she had yeah one and... my brother got one years ago i remember this and there was a um i i flew down uh to phoenix when he still lived there to surprise my mom and my stepdad ruined it because he was a dipshit yeah um which really sucked because i really wanted to like surprise my mom and 
um, he was flying in the same time I was, but then he was like, well, if you're taking the, the, the grandkids, like there's not going to be any room for somebody else. And she's like, what, what are you talking about? And he's like, Oh, well, Garrett's coming. And she was like, what? And I literally was just like, I was like, really, dude, you, you really like, you really had to do that. Well, anyways, the long short of it, my brother, like, he was super excited to see me and he's like, Hey, I need you to help me do this book. And I'm like, okay. And there was like a couple of pages where it was like, do like certain things in the book. Uh-huh. And, um, I did like a couple, I think I like spit in the book. I did one where like, I, I think I chewed gum and had to stick it to the paper um, th- there was like a bunch of yeah, like just random shit. This, this yeah, is like yeah. And I dug that. I I think that's such a cool thing, especially for like someone like if you do it one one page a day, yeah. and especially like what you've been doing, and when people are like, "Hey, can you do like page like sixty nine or like yeah. page like whatever?" Which is funny because like the first thing is uh, no, add your own numbers to, or add your own page numbers. So yeah. instead of going like front page one, back page two, this page three, back. I just went like on the right side, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, all the way yeah. down. But then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. So I would go to the back pages. And I start putting random ass numbers. And you should have done it. You should have done it from one to whatever. And then from the I, opposite I, I side. Thought, yeah. I thought about doing that too, but I just started adding red, random numbers. And the one I did yesterday, I think was uh, the, the, my last point. It was just like, I did like a thousand something. I said, fuck it. Who the fuck cares? Blah, blah, blah. Nobody said I had to do a certain number. Yada, yada, yada. But now that we're talking about it, Stump, choose a number between 1 and 108. You know what? Because it's one of my favorite movies and one of my favorite lines in the movie, uh, you got to do Helm 108. You son of a bitch. And if you know what movie that's from. I might have to Google this shit because it sounds so fucking familiar. Uh, Multipass. Oh, I fucking hate that movie. I hate that movie. My wife loves that fucking movie. I I can't it's, stand that movie. I, I just, think The Fifth Element is one of the most boring movies I've ever watched in my I, life. I, I love it, but like I have to be like in the mood to watch it. But it's just that like there's something about how like when they're like they literally the dude goes help 108 there's just something about that that like draws my attention to it i'm so glad that you like because 11 and 6 are my two favorite numbers and somebody seven already is mine seven is mine which is weird oh well, no that's actually seven i hate and... odd numbers though i hate an odd number so like, do I'm i that kind of person like if i if i'm doing a volume it has to be odd or even numbers or within fives, like I have to have a ten or a fifteen, oh. or even numbers. My my kid thinks it's really weird that when we watch movies together, I'm like, no, 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 it has to be on an even number. It cannot I've be. I've screamed. A- I've screamed at my, like you know. Okay, so Jamie and uh, her husband Tyler, there's like Tyler's I, halfway I deaf, so like thing. he will turn it up, and I'm just like, <clears throat> <clears throat> I can't tell them, hey, you need to up it up one or down one because they don't understand. So I, let me tell you what page one hundred eight is. I okay, I have to trace my toe. I have to trace my toes. Now that's fucking disgusting because I hate feet. Okay, um, then let's and, do. And that's okay. literally the last page. No, no, let's then we'll we'll. Uh, you know I'm what? Doing save, it. I'm doing save it. that for me, and I'll give you my thumb, and we'll trace my thumb when you come on. You on disgusting February. bastard! No, I'm doing it. I'm gonna do this tonight. No, don't don't do one hundred eight. Let's do. Let's see. You've already done. All right. Well, you've already done sixty nine, which is fucking hilarious. Did I do sixty nine? You oh, did. No, sixty nine. I couldn't do because it was stick a photo here, glue a photo of yourself you dislike, and disface. Oh, I can't okay. find a bad picture of me. That, that's right. And then you did the whole photo shoot thing where you're like, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Have you done forty two yet? I will see. So this page, no, I have not. So I will do page forty-two and one hundred eight tonight okay. for you. 
don't don't show your actual foot. Just do the. No, I'm gonna show my actual foot. I'll, I'll find the because my both of my feet are ugly, but like one's uglier than the other. I'll I'll make sure that my toes are clipped and. We'll ask and ask the wife which one's less ugly, and then choose that. Oh, foot. she she doesn't know. Oh God, I hate feet so much. I. <sighs> right. All right. I don't so have we, we are at two hours fifty nine minutes and fifty seven oh, seconds. Okay. I am going to end this, and we are going to have you go to bed. Yes. We are going to figure out because I'm thinking I'm going to do this shit on Mondays, probably well, around. Yeah. Oh, what time you get off? Uh, six thirty. Uh, I'm usually well. I'm home by six thirty every night. Okay, so we could probably schedule six thirty ish, even if you pop in late. Uh, seven o'clock, six forty-five. Let's uh, let's let's figure that shit out because I really want to continue to do this shit on Mondays because I don't want to interfere with Beard Laws' show on Tuesdays and Thursdays, yeah. all that good shit. And uh, but before we go, before we go, there's yes. something I gotta I gotta do. It's, it's not too much information. Question. You already know my answer. <laughs> That was something I set up earlier. All right. So a too much information question. And this is something random that I'm trying to trying to trying to think of. Okay. Um how old are you? There uh, I'll be thirty eight this year. As as an adult who's thirty eight years old, and this is a too much information question, because like I said, it's not too much information question. question. I, you know, I, I recorded love... that myself. Like, I recorded that. I, I downloaded an app and everything. All right. As a 30-year-old man, okay. <laughs> do you still have dreams that you wake up sticky? <laughs> yes. It's, it's not too much information. information. Question... I appreciate I appreciate having that answer. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's so hard to be like, I, like you know what? Yeah, like we all do. It's been a while for me, but it, it's still weird. Like being an adult, like I thought it was embarrassing. I didn't even ever want to tell my wife when it ever happened, but it, it's still an embarrassing thing. Like, so I just want to know, as you know, somebody who's older than me, that it actually happens. I'll say this much. It, uh, I have learned that, uh, I guess like my libido or whatever has slowed down, um, uh, since I've gotten older, but, um, I also have not, I, I have, uh, I guess th this will be a little bit too, too much, uh, information for the ones out there, but... Sorry, <laughs> no, per that was perfect. Just, just end it, just right there. Uh, no, I'm trying uh, to hit, hit the too much information shit real quick. But okay, do, do it again. Just, it's just not too much information. information. So basically, I've stopped dating about seven years ago, and I just, I, I basically been focusing, you know, basically just focusing, focusing on myself, really. Which and, I, like I have to say, um, I went when I went to your Facebook to try to find pictures and shit. I went to like your albums and stuff. Did you know you still have an album for wedding? That was actually my brother's wedding. I don't know. Oh, okay, who, never mind. Or how that like showed up. It was really weird because I, I didn't actually look at it, but I thought it was like, oh shit, Stump still has fucking his past. No, no, I still, I have some stuff on my past, but I've actually deleted anything that has it, other than my kids' photos on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, which is, which great. is, yeah. Like, I, she, I saw your daughter recently. That was crazy. Yeah. She, uh, she and I were actually supposed to have a movie night tonight. Um, and, uh, when you hit, you know, no, it's okay. We're, we're actually going to do this every, every night. So we actually, we just stopped, uh, We'll watch a, a a series. No, you're you're totally fine because she fucking, actually was. Dude, like, I swear, I, I thought you were gonna say you chose me over the fucking kid. I was about to. No, 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 no. She. The she first thing I was gonna do when I see you, I was gonna punch you. Now she couldn't find a movie for us to watch, anyways, and uh, because I hit her up earlier and I was like, hey, um, I was having co it was like earlier earlier in the day and I was having coffee and she was like waking up and I'm like, all right, 
what are we doing tonight? And she was like, I don't know. I got, she was off school and I was off work. And I'm like, okay, are we going to watch a movie later? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, pick the movie. I need to go grocery shopping, pick the movie, text me and tell me what movie you were watching. She didn't text me. You text me. And I'm like, I text her and I said, you know what? No movie tonight. I'm doing a podcast. I, I, we're going to do that. I'm going to do that instead. And she was I, like, I, I highly suggest, I don't know if you ever seen the movie masterminds, but I recently watched that. It, I don't know if you like, it, it's a free app that you can get. It's called Pluto. It's available she, on Pluto. Yeah. Uh, masterminds has, um, Zach Galifianakis, Owen Wilson, uh, uh, somebody from SNL. It's a great movie. I recently I'll just text, watched it again. She has Pluto. I don't, but I or no, actually, she it's downloaded free. Pluto on my TV. So I'll ask her, and we'll watch that one. She, we just got done watching. Uh, uh, we just did one where I forget what it's called, but it's about actually uh, like the pandemic where people are infected with a disease to where like if you're infected it's on eight on hulu i i don't know what it's called but it's a love story and uh it's a bike messenger with this like girl that's like stuck in an apartment she can't leave the apartment it's he's like he never got the like it's really weird but it's it makes total sense because it it was actually done during the beginning of COVID, and it was really good. And then we watched, uh, we we just kind of we've just been watching stuff that she's really been into, um, more dramatic stuff. I'm not really into it. I'm more into like give me action, give me horror, give me like Pixar. That's kind of <laughs> my thing. My wife is the horror action person. I'm the comedy person. Um, my wife likes to put on horror movies to fall asleep to, and it's really scary. Like two o'clock in the morning, when she wants to put on like the scary movie that I'm trying to focus on at the same time of trying to sleep, but I also am afraid of the dark. And so it's like, oh, you're you're a bitch. I so I actually have Freddy Krueger tattooed on me. Dope. And but it's a funny Freddy Krueger because it's where's Freddy as in where's Waldo because I also have uh, Waldo tattooed on me. Ooh, and if you I find Waldo... I pull up a picture. No, go ahead. I, I can show you where Waldo is on my on my arm. Well, I'm trying to find... I, I wonder if you I can see, pop up a picture. Oh, of, of, of Waldo? No, of... My, so my son was born on Halloween. He's kind of a giant sissy on everything, but he used to call Michael Myers Uncle Myers. I remember and, that, yeah. And and so like he would be into the horror stuff, but not into the horror stuff. So down here we have scaregrounds. And okay. there's there's a guy and uh he does Beetlejuice, which he is amazing as Beetlejuice. He does Michael, he does Jason, but when we saw him, he was Freddy Krueger. And um my son was scared shitless. So we had to introduce him as Uncle Freddy. And this guy was very fucking sweet. He, his wife was pregnant. And, like, he, he did a whole thing. Like, he, he pulled me aside. He goes, hey, you know, they did the whole pictures thing. He goes, I really appreciate you doing the whole family thing with your son. I have a Michael mask in the back. You want to do some pictures? And I go, fuck yeah. And, um. He gave me his Michael mask, knife and shit, and it was just like he was Freddy Krueger. I was Michael. It was a whole thing, and it was all for free. Now these pictures were ridiculously expensive, but I I pulled him aside and I took twenty bucks and I shoved it down his pants. I go go fuck yourself, sir. And it, it was it was one of those things like he was very emotional. Like you're doing this thing. We took him through the haunted houses, and people were yeah. like, oh fuck. Like he gave the warning to people like, be careful. Yeah. It was just, it was it was a very sweet thing. So he did a super nice thing. But I I, I have this picture of me, my wife, my son, and Freddie. My son is scared shitless the whole time. But he eventually got used to him because Freddie kept on giving him candy. Yeah, and uh, oh, so it's, it, it's amazing. My 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 kids actually. She has I forget what the phobia what it's called, but it's the she's scared of clowns. She oh, I, have, I'm scared shitless of clowns. Uh, it's he, uh. I can't remember what it's called either, but I am scared shitless. So of she, anytime, so like, I've tried to explain to her, like, 
that it, it's a i've actually talked her down a little bit about clowns and um uh, i kind of have a i'm very uneasy with people in clown makeup as well but i'm not scared of them i know that they're real people but like <sighs> i it's the thing that i it's because i can't identify their face i think is yep. what scares me so like in a mask a mask is not going to scare me because I know it's a mask. I know that it, it's covering their face. But when they have, like, face paint on, it's like, but what do you really look like? That's that. That's where I'm at with it, right? So with her, she doesn't understand that that's actually a human being. She just sees it as that's not normal, right? We used to... In Tacoma, we like our biggest known clown was JP Patches. And he used to hang out outside the fucking zoo, like the 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 point of find zoo and shit. And you know, do balloon. He scared the shit out of me. He was on like public access TV. One of my buddies was actually like his family was friends with him. I refused, like, there was a whole thing. I refused to go to a like a function that this guy was gonna be at in regular fucking dress. Because he scared the shit out of me as a clown. I fucking hate clowns. There was um, a clown back in the day. His name was Bozo the Clown. Oh, yeah. I know Bozo. I actually got to meet him and the, the his sideshow buddy who was in the top hat and the tail. Um, they came to my hometown on a on a flatbed trailer and did the whole like show. In the, and this was like early to mid-90s. And I was like a little kid. I was I was probably not even I don't know. I was probably like six, so it had to be early nineties. And I remember it scared the crap out of me. Now, yep. when I was around that same time, I got to see Sesame Street when they did like they would tour through your town and do like Sesame Street in person. Uh huh. Big Bird. I got to meet Big Bird, and I got to stand next to. Big Bird, as a kid, it scared the living shit out of me because this is a seven foot tall, animatronic bird, human thing, and it scared the shit out of me because, like, I like I didn't know that I I thought these were because I see it on TV as a kid. I'm like, oh, these are Muppets. These are. Yep. I don't realize there's people inside of it, and. Yep. I, I got to like see that stuff as a kid and I was I was so scared. I I I didn't even know what to think. I was just like how do I react to this? Like cuz my fight or flight kicked in because my my body is telling me that's not normal. Run. But then I'm like so intrigued because I'm like oh that thing's huge, you know. No, like, it, so it, it's fucking scary. It's I I I don't. You, there was a band, uh, called the uh, John Wayne Gacy Trio. Oh shit! Okay. And so back in the day in Tacoma, we had a, a house venue called Nemesis House. It's and, still around ish. Well, no, Nemesis House isn't isn't a thing anymore. Like, but. Well, it used to be. It, it, well, yeah. I remember the Nemesis house. I've been there one time. Fuck that place. Uh, yeah. So there yeah. was, we were going to book the, the the Gacy Trio, and I go, all right, here's, here's my, my thing. They like to dress in, in clown makeup. John Wayne Gacy scares the shit out of me. Like, I, like the guy I, scares the shit out of me. But, like, my yeah. thing was they can only wear their face paint for their stage act. Um. They refused, called me a giant pussy, and said they will not play our house. And um, I was okay with that. I, I was definitely okay with, because I did not want these clowns walking around in my fucking home because I have a phobia. Nobody understood the fucking phobia. I had a coworkers that didn't understand the phobia. Yeah. One of my coworkers, I worked at this warehouse, and uh, he decided to dress like a clown and run around the fucking warehouse. And I just see this giant, red, like this red flash pop behind my fucking like peripherals. And I go chasing with my fucking knife out and I tackled this motherfucker and started wailing because I'm, I don't do clowns. And yeah, so this band refused to play our fucking house because I'm a bitch. 
But you know what? Here's the thing. I hate people, and I usually don't use that term. I hate people that will not understand the trauma, nor do they understand what phobias are. Yep. When I try to explain to people, so I have what's called tricyclophobia. It, it's the fear of being injected. I cannot do Ooh. shots. Okay, oh, yeah. I cannot. I, I can do needles. Needles do not bother. Which is me. weird. It's, okay, so tattoos and piercings. We have. I don't like needles. I fucking yeah. hate needles. Yeah. But tattoos and piercings, sure. I mean, I don't like getting either, but it, it, we have it. Them. Do, it doesn't. It doesn't scare me because it's. I know what's what's in what's what's there. I know what's going to show up. I know what's on my body. When yeah. you t- tried to tell me, um, basically what uh, to tell me? Oh, you're getting a uh, a shot, or you're getting like a flu shot, or whatever the case may be. Uh, that's when like that stuff really bugs. Like it, it freaks me out because. I don't know what's in my body. Like, I don't know what you're, you could sit there and tell me, oh, it's, it's this, this, and this, but I'm like, but you're putting it in my body. Why? Like, it's a weird, I would rather, if I choose, if I had the choice of not to get a shot of something and, or to get it, like, I would choose not to. Now, with most people, they're not going to understand that because to them, it's just oh, get it done and it's oh, it's over and done with. It's not the it's not the pinch that you get on your arm and you're done with getting the the shot. It's the whole process of sitting there, being in a doctor's office, uh, then getting the, the getting the prep for the shot. Then having the shot done, and then the aftermath of the shot. That's where, like, I'm like, Ugh. like that, and then not knowing what it's actually going to do to my body. I I hope it was. Um, <laughs> I I like my thing is is like I just I can't I can't do syringes. Syringes to me. Even if it's a food syringe, I don't want to be near it because it freaks me out. Needles don't bother me. Needles, because I've been tattooed enough to where I'm like, okay, I understand what's going, and I've been pure, you know, I used to have gauges. I took my my gauges off. Um, This guy lives in Australia. I heard Australia doesn't exist. Anyways. It um, does exist, just like dinosaurs don't exist either, but they did. You just don't, but it's okay. Because oh, just wait. I have I have a new theory, and I cannot what? wait to what, share what, it with everybody. What's your new theory? It's about paleontology and it being a cult. It uh, is. Well, one of my coworkers, or one of my, I guess, okay, same company, blah, blah, blah. Uh, somebody that works in the warehouse now, um, he was over at our house, and we, I was talking about my theory about dinosaurs. He goes, yeah, paleontology is a cult. He goes, why do you think they're so fucking boring? And I'm like, oh, you just helped my fucking, like, you just helped my online thing. Like well, I, I had to cover up the whole dinosaurs didn't exist on my fucking flag because I was tired of talking about it. Like it's so okay. Weird. So I, here's here's my thing with with uh, and I can kind of understand where you're coming with with the dinosaurs didn't exist because what we're shown on TV and movies what dinosaurs are supposed to look like and all the T Rexes that we see are actually fake. They're actually and this is a useless information. Uh, fact that I do have that I've had forever. The bones and everything that you see are actually uh, of different dinosaurs. We actually don't know what T-Rexes actually look like because there's never been an actual fossil of an actual T-Rex ever produced. It's always either A, it's either just the skull and neck, or it's of the tail. There's never a body. Now, the other thing with it is the same thing with did they have feathers or did yep. they have hair, uh, or yeah. hair or did they have scales? There's no there's no 100% proof other than the elephants, uh, the uh, woolly mammoths are the yep. only ones that they have that are 100% um, 
that they know that they have proof of because they found those, you know, they, they found them with it fully 100% intact. So um, now my thing is, is uh, what, what did it say? You lick my what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you just I just that? thought this pop up. It said something about uh, the guy it's knows longest, his stuff about music. Longest, longest conversation I ever heard with Stumpy. This guy knows his stuff about music. He also has a red mustache. I lick him and make him mine. Done. There, there, there's no way fans are butts. It's it's gonna happen. Uh, so the thing about the whole dinosaur theory, it started uh-huh. as a joke, and right. it turned into something that I had to continue with. Yeah, and. It sucks. It sucks because it's a funny thing, but I I have to continue. You have to keep it going. It. It's, it's a it's, joke that you got to keep going. I get it's it. My, like, it's, it's not a niche. It's a it's just something that's turned into a person. Like I yeah. have batshit theories about everything, which one of my questions I was going to ask you is, do you have any crazy conspiracy theories? Yes. I actually have one that actually makes a lot of sense in a weird way. If you look at it from a uh, uh, in a certain way, so with our solar system, okay. Oh shit! We've only seen one part of the sun. We have not seen the full circumference of the sun. Now, every time that we are told what our solar system is supposed to look like, we all every planet kind of revolves around the sun in different rotations right okay okay have you ever seen a fan with only one fan blade i mean i've seen a fan with no fan blades but but i'm saying you you you, okay picture it as this the lights are the sun we have one fan blade okay okay we are all of the the planets are all within alignment of each other we're that one fan blade are we ever going to see the same exact spot in the sun every time we go through or are we going to see the same sun constantly because the earth is turning a specific way around the the sun right no no the sun i know the sun is real the sun is not fake <laughs> what i'm what i'm getting at is if you think about it in this way, if we if all the planets are, are revolving around one thing, okay, and we're we're constantly going around the sun the specific way, and the okay. sun is sitting still, do we actually know what the other side actually looks like, or are we all just following along with that side of the sun? So are you saying that the sun isn't an actual circle? No, it, it's a circle, but what I'm saying is, so if you take, um, uh, what is that thing? Okay, do you remember that skip rope from the 90s? Are you talking about the, uh, are you, wait, are you... The thing that attaches to one leg? And okay, you yeah, the uh, yeah. the jump it or something. I, I know what you're talking about, then it had that yeah. little counter or whatever. Okay. Okay, so you think about it in that perspective, right? We're in that line right and all the planets are aligning the same amount and we're going around that one leg or the sun and we're revolving around it the same way but it's still turning the same way we're turning so as the theory of the dark side of the moon do we actually know the other side of the sun i mean the sun revolves but it doesn't. We don't. But we don't scientifically know that it actually does. There's no actual hundred percent proof that it does. I mean, we know we know more about space. <laughs> I know it exists. I'm just saying we don't have proof of what the other side looks like. We know that it's 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 a star that's imploding slowly. Now, this is my other theory. So each planet. Okay, is the evolution of the planet before. So Venus and Mars used to be each other, and Earth used to be what what Mars used to be, but the sun has imploded slowly enough to where it's eating up 
each planet slowly. So Venus, Mars, and Earth are literally the exact, we're basically seeing our future from a different planet. Because if what Mars used to be is a planet like Earth, why is it that then uh, Jupiter and Saturn are different elevations and different things that are combining? Because if that star implodes or explodes more than it is, and it eats that next planet, then say, for example, the next hundred thousands of years, Venus disappears, then Mars turns into Venus, we turn into Mars, the next planet turns into Earth. That's so, like a... But what you're saying, what you're saying is... It's not an illusion. I never said that. <laughs> you're putting words in my mouth. <laughs> This is just a weird conspiracy that I've I've had ever since I was a kid because that is that is insane that is fucking insane. But now, you think now, but, now? Now I think I have to do some research on this shit and like because the sun revolves around the. But yeah, I get what you're saying. We have never seen the other side of the sun, but I've drank too much for your shit. I. Even if I, even if you're sober, this it, it's a weird like we know more about specific things than we actually know about the planets because no one's asking these questions. These are questions that like like you think about it. Okay, was Mars actual Earth before it was Mars? Was Venus Mars before it was Venus? Like it makes it's like Pac Man almost. If you look at it that way, the sun is Pac Man and we're the dots. And each time Pac-Man eats a planet, he grows even bigger. Okay. And we're so Pluto is the last uh, uh, evolution of what is going to turn into Uranus to then uh, it's, it's is, Uranus. Call it Uranus. Uranus. Come on, it's Uranus or Uranus, whatever. <laughs> uh, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, and then what's I forget what the because uh, there's nine planets, even though technically Pluto isn't a planet. Pluto, eh, go fuck themselves. Uh, like in our, that's weird. In our lifetime, we've gained and lost a planet in our solar system. In mine, in your lifetime, that's weird. Yeah. But you think about it, like think about it in that way, to where like it doesn't make sense. Like we used to have been told that like we had a North Pole and we had a South Pole. Well, now our axes are no longer like this. Our axes are actually like, well, actually, your way, it's this way. So yeah. instead of us being rotating and we're going around the circle like this, we're now rotating like, you know, like like this. So it, we're no longer just a circle. We're now like an egg shape. We've actually been pulled and we're turned to the side. So when we're rotating, it's no longer, that's why, like, the season of the stuff that we're having now, it's not due to uh, uh, what, what people are, well, I forget what they're calling it, but it, it's due to the fact that we're actually what those certain areas used to get. We're no longer at some point, not in our lifetime, but the North Pole and the South Pole are going to end up rotating completely at some point. We're going to like totally just be like this and we're going to find out that what Antarctica is, is going to melt and then be back to what it was before. Same with, um, <laughs> I'm just saying like, that's just what my, cons it's, it's a conspiracy. Everybody can disagree with me all they want. That's fine. Uh, I, I do, I do believe dinosaurs existed, but my thing is this. There's questions. The only, There's questions on the whole thing. The two things that I do not think exist, but people believe they still existed because we don't have actual proof. One, unicorns. If unicorns actually existed, there would be an actual proof of a unicorn. Two, dragons. If dragons actually existed in a certain point in our lifetime, why have not we have seen actual proof of dragons? It's the same thing with the Bigfoot theory. If Bigfoot whoa, whoa, actually, whoa, 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 whoa,
or does exist. I'm saying, has there actually been actual proof that we've seen, or are we so desensitized from? Uh, <laughs> there's difference between a bearded dragon and an actual dragon, and beard laws does not exist. Um, I will. That's actually a theory that I will actually say. Beard laws does not exist because technically wow. there is no beard laws. So. No, my thing is, is like, you think about it, like we're, we're so desensitized with things that happen in like media, like movies and stuff like that, that tell us that this stuff does exist, that we believe it. And, but think about it, like, okay, but do we actually have proof of it actually existing? Like giants, we have proof that giants actually existed. We have skeletons of these giants actually existing. Now, yeah. At that time period, people were actually a lot smaller. Me and you would be considered giants compared to what people were back in the day. They were a lot. They were a lot more. They weren't as tall as they are now. So when someone was born that was over six foot five to seven foot tall, they were considered a giant. Mm -hmm. Now, how rare is it that? And and think about it this way: in the U.S., how many do we ever see about people being over seven foot tall in the U.S.? Uh, what's the percentage? Well, I think very minimal. Okay. But then you go to somewhere like Asia and Russia and a lot of those places where a lot of the, the typical height of somebody is under six foot and you get somebody who is seven foot to six foot five to seven foot tall. They're, a, they're an anomaly because that's, that's such a small percentage I do believe in giants. Don't ever say that I don't believe in giants. Well, no, no. no. Now, I'm just saying, like I've seen big ass people before. But but I'm I have a cousin that's seven two, so it wow. yeah, and I'm the shortest in my family. All my brothers are over six foot. I'm five foot nine, and I'm the the littlest out of out of my brothers. So, like it's one of those weird things where I. I think that like we have proof of these things, but then there's other proofs that we don't have of other things. Now, for example, do we know that there's lizard people that live in a realm <laughs> in the earth? Uh, we probably do, and we're probably so desensitized from it from movies that we we are probably at this point we don't we're not gonna be so like, oh, that okay, they actually do exist. Okay. Uh, same thing with like the aliens, the greys, and all those like, um, uh, and that sort of thing. We've probably seen that sort of stuff because think about it: are we really the only human beings or the only uh, living creatures in a planet floating around a galaxy that has other planets that no. does exist? No. We can't be. There's no way. Now, are we uh, like a test? subjects in a planet that also is in another solar system of another planet that is watching us probably and people will think that's crazy and think that that's weird but you know what uh, think about it like do we know about these gods that all these ancient people are saying uh were they actual gods or were they aliens do we don't actually have a hundred percent proof of that because we don't know those languages. We're just like basically just uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like we're uh, it, it, we're just kind of reading off. Like if you read Spanish, you kind of know what you're talking about, but you're like, yep. I I think they're talking about animals, but then they're not really talking about animals at all. Like we don't actually know that. So really, you did. I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm just typing random shit on, on the banners right now. <laughs> but but you see what I'm saying? Like, I can talk about, like, the, the theories about this kind of stuff because if someone has, like, a, 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 a basically something, like the dinosaur thing, like, I know that there has been dinosaur skeletons, but we haven't had a full actual from nose to tail dinosaur that has not been discovered. The dinosaurs that we see in uh these museums are all fake they those are actual fake dinosaurs those are actually the dinosaur bones those are castings of 
bits and pieces of multiple different dinosaurs. Uh, the, those paleontologists have actually stated that, that have said that, unfortunately, these are actually not real dinosaurs. But, like, how are we supposed to 100% believe that? It is a swamp. I okay. Here's my here's my argument about Disneyland. Okay. And, uh, before you know, because I know it's ten thirty. Jesus Christ. Here's my argument about Disneyland. Okay. You know, you, we've seen the original uh, vacation movie, right? So you know the story <laughs> when they get to Wally World and it's actually a well, painting. Well, well, Wally World is closed, folks. What? What? Oh yeah, Wally World is closed. Uh. So, you know that the whole story, like, when they run through the parking lot, Worldly World is actually a painting, and they're just running to nothing. Yeah. Here's here's my theory about Disneyland. Okay. You're walking up to this magical place, but it's actually a painting. You walk okay. through these fucking gates, and you get sprayed with this purple mist. Uh-huh. You get knocked out cold. You get carried by, a, a like, a giant, I guess we can say. Thrown into a pile of people with a brainwashing device. Okay. And you think you're having this magical time, but really, it's all fake. You're getting robbed, like you're getting robbed blind. Technology these days, you can make anything on Photoshop. You can make anything a picture, and I I, I believe that Disneyland isn't exactly a a real place. And okay, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this, and I'm gonna do it with a grain of salt. Okay, have you? been to either disneyland never. or disney world never that's why because no, you it, it that's the that's a, the way i've explained this like even like my bosses my my lady boss she's obsessed with disney and they've done like the underground tour and shit and like my, my my dude boss he's that kind of person where they're like they went through these places and you know they get to see the costumes he goes hey where's the mickey mouse costume and everybody just stopped because mickey mouse is real well, they're not oh. there as a cast member. You cannot you you're not allowed to. It's that like like you said, that delusion of you're not supposed to know if you're that character, you're a friend yeah. of the character. You're the friend of I've been to Disneyland. The last time I was in Disneyland was a have you though? Have you been yes. to Disneyland or yes. were you thrown into a pile with a brainwashing device and getting robbed? Well, I was five. So what would oh, they rob doesn't me Doesn't mean they won't throw a child into a pile with a little fucking crown on his head and fucking get robbed thinking that he's enjoying all this fancy times. Do you, Joe, do you want to go to Disneyland? Yeah. Okay. So until <laughs> but I get I get what you're saying. It, it's almost like the same thing with like the moon landing. Do yeah. we actually believe oh. that the actual until it's in front of my face? Do we know it's the same? You're a skeptic. That's what you are. You're a skeptic. It, you... It's the whole thing with, you know, like, you know, I will say it with, you know, like the open mindedness. Yeah. It's religion. It's it's this. It's that. Unless I see it, I don't believe it. That's I'm the same way. I I'm the I'm a skeptic to unless it's in front of my face. Yep. Don't tell. Like don't. What's that saying? Don't piss on my shoe and tell me it's raining. Like but I will still like I will not. Like I will not actually judge somebody who believes in things. Like, yeah. Like you know, it, it's it. You believe in you. You believe I believe in me. As long as we don't like you don't we don't shove it down each other's throats. But exactly. will I argue with a friend about it. Fuck yes. The same. I uh, but, I I will do the exact same. I've been to Disneyland now. You what you're saying was it a computer simulation that I went through? Now I can sit there and say that we're actually all living in a, in our own matrix because. There's no. actually a theory, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's, have you and I, me and you have actually been in the same room together. Yes, yes. Multiple times. Yes. Multiple, not just Without once. Without actually just, knowing each other, yes, we have been in the same room multiple times. Multiple times, and didn't even know each other existed. Yes. Now, we both know, we, we, we can see each other through internet, that me and you we know that we exist. We have mutual friends that we know in, in real life that know that we exist. We, but do me and you coexist? Fuck. 
that's the the weirdest theory that I know that, that sounds really weird, but do me and you actually coexist? Are you perceiving the same world that I'm perceiving? I mean, y- yes. But are you? And am I? Stump. Jesus Christ. Like, I hate, I hate, like, I know what you're saying, and I hate this. Like, like I know this this whole, it's a weird acid trip and we haven't it, even it been is, on it is and i and i it's like this is one of those things that like i've thought of multiple times and not, you know i i know this absolute theory it fucks me up because what if what if we aren't actually like a physical being but we are like game pieces kind of thing yeah we're we're basically so the way that i've explained this before and actually i think why matrix actually uh, to a lot of people, the movie Matrix actually makes a lot of sense. Is we're basically Sims. We're we are basically a Sim character that is played by somebody else who is what our sole purpose is. Now, this is why people will remember their past lives when they're a lot younger into what they're older. Or, for example, okay. If you have to think about a time period in any sort of time period that makes sense to you, that you feel almost at ease with, that you feel kind of like you almost feel that you've been there before. Um, I, I do. Um, think about it this <laughs> way. Okay. If you go to, if you read a book or you watch a movie and you're like, man, why does that look familiar to me? Or why does that feel comfortable to me? Have you ever, have you ever been to that, like that, that feeling to where you watch something and you're like, okay. So for like me, I have a weird connection with the Victorian and the Edwardian era. I don't know why, but I have a weird connection with that, that time period in I our have no idea what the hell that is so victorian is from 1800s to the early 1900s so like right before like basically 1800 um to night to like 1899 to about 1920 that's the uh victorian area to the edwardian area like england or the u.s that's so like when we think Victorian houses, that's when that shit was built. Okay. So, like, you've seen Peaky Blinders, right? No, no. I've never... Okay. I don't like British TV N- or movies. Okay. I can't handle you... the accents for that long. I, but, it like, have you ever... Well, you've seen, like, Calbee movies, right? Who? Cal- like, uh, uh, Western movies. Besides, like Five Will Goes West or uh, like, uh, like, like, do yeah, like Tombstone, okay, Tombstone or was, or was... Uh, Back to the Future Three. That's the most okay. western that so, I've ever had in my life. Okay, Tombstone is what was done in the Edwardian period, so that's the late eighteen hundreds into the nineteen hundreds. Okay, I'm super comfortable in that era because for some reason that makes total sense to me how they lived. Now. There's, it's a weird thing to where when I think about it, like when I try to explain this to people, people aren't going to understand and they'll think I'm fucking crazy, which you're probably going to think I'm crazy. But that sort of like the way they dress, the way how they like, uh, they kind of show themselves and how they perceive themselves is very comfortable to me. And there's this weird like, Especially when I started growing my mustache, not mine or yours. Um, when I started gr- growing the mustache, I started to realize that like it was kind of this weird, almost subculture. So, but then it was always. I have like a really weird, um, a very, very, it really bad anxiety when I go to doctors or dentists. And I didn't realize how macabre and how, like, scary it was during that time until, like, I've done research on it. And I'm like, oh, that kind of makes sense as to why, like, 
going to the dentist scares the living hell out of me. Now, like, it it could be for other reasons, but like that the the doctor stuff from that time is still like pretty insane too. Same thing with the music. Same thing with um, just like how they just a bunch of stuff. Like I just think that that stuff from that time just makes sense. Now it's also the same thing with the 1950s and 40s. I love that era. I love the the fashion. I love the music from that era. I love a lot of from the era, but like I also don't like a lot of stuff from that era as well. So that could be why. It, there's just a lot of, that's what I'm saying like when people like when it, not everybody but there's a lot of people that will watch a movie and they're like oh I really love this and that's why they love it because they get attached to that spe- specific era because their original game player if we're going to go into the matrix was originally from that era You are fucking beyond me. Like, just, your fucking, just, your mind works in so many fucking ways that I cannot comprehend. Like, what the shit, man? But that's, that that's literally, like, how I, like, but, again, this is just me just kind of going off of, like, like you said, conspiracy theories. These are just conspiracy theories to me that just make sense. Like, when we see movies, are, is that actually, like, an actual, like, uh, you remember, you've seen uh, Last Action Hero, right? Oh, God. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Fuck it. Oh, but the best, part of the, the best part of the whole movie is the fact that, uh, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, oh, his nemesis, jokingly, is uh, oh, Sylvester Stallone is the Terminator. Oh, I, 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 I thought we were I, – the nemesis. When you said nemesis, I thought we were talking about the bad guy in the movie. Yes, Sylvester Stallone is the Terminator in his world. God, yeah. that fucked me up. See, five, that's five, what I'm – Five. five. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, you know, so you think about it in that weird perspective like that, that's kind of where we're at. Like, when you think about it, like – when they say, oh, this original actor was supposed to be, like, it's almost like a Mandela effect when it comes to, like, certain things. When they're like, oh, this actor was supposed to be the actual actor of that movie, that star of that movie. And you think about it, like, what would it look like if that person was, like, is that in our timeline or is that going to be in someone else's timeline? Wait, are you saying Stallone was supposed to be the Terminator? I'm just, that that's a theory. Okay, like, uh, I, I, I was about to say, because I, no. I hate the Mandela effect. Let me just say that's the one the most fucking that I hate. There's the only two that I can actually say that I've actually well three that I've actually lived through that people still tell me that did not exist. Jiffy peanut butter existed when I was a kid. It was a red label and it was called Jiffy. I remember yeah. this still to still to this day. It was called yes. Jiffy, not Jif. Yeah. It was Jiffy, J I F F Y. Don't tell me that's not a thing. Apparently, nobody else knows what I'm talking about when I talk about Jiffy. Now, the other thing is, is Adidas had an extra D in it. I no, remember D D I. It, I I remember the corn song. All day I dream about sex. There was but, no extra D. But see, there when when I remember because I had a bag, an Adidas bag that had A D D on it, and it said Adidas, but it was spelled A D D. Now the other thing is is actually uh, don't don't say the Shaquille O'Neal as a genie, please. Well, Shaquille was the you're talking about Sinbad. no, sh- sh- uh, no, no, sorry, Sinbad, Sinbad, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say if you say that Sinbad was the genius Shazam or all that thing, I'm gonna be pissed. So I remember the commercial, but I remember it was always like a thing that like people talked about. But I remember the commercial it was on like TGI Friday or whatever. But it came on before uh, 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 the one with Shaq, Kazam, Kazam. I- yeah. yeah, such a good movie. And I no. remember, but I remembered it because it was on the Disney Channel or whatever. 
And but I actually do remember actual Medela uh, when uh, he actually. I remember him dying in prison. I remember that. Who? Uh, the uh, actual why they call it the Medela effect. It's uh, what's his oh, name? Oh, uh, oh, I, I, oh my God. What I forget what his first name is, but I remember him dying in prison. And then all of a sudden, years later, he got released from prison. And I remember I asked my dad, I'm like, didn't he die in prison? My dad's like, yeah. Like, my dad was, like, questioning me, like, like, how, what? Like, it was a weird, but then also, too, I remember how, like, like I said, Jiffy was a peanut butter. Yeah. I remember Jiffy. I remember that. Like, clear as day it was a red cap with a red uh red label and it said jiffy and it had uh the and then years later they changed it to jiff they 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 stopped using jiffy they just turned it to jiff because I yeah i remember jiffy as well so and it's weird that me and you are the same age we remember it and we're we were born in two different states like yeah. thousands of miles away from each other we both remember the same thing that's that's what the mandela effect really is well it's just like the uh the target like target the store it's like the symbol was it ever this or was it ever that i remember it's red white and red uh, see it what how do i remember yeah red white and red yeah apparently yeah. not um was it uh raisin bran with the t the two scoops the sun had sunglasses apparently yep. never did yeah, he had sunglasses that went like this on his on his nose, and yeah. then he had the, he had the two scoops. I remember the sunglasses. Apparently, it never happened. the The one that I saw, which is it drives me nuts, is the Pringles can. You know, we had talked about the bald head and not bald the, head. The no, the hair Pringles, or the eyebrows. The Pringles, the Pringles man just kind of grew old with us. Yeah. Monopoly man, did he have a monocle or not? Um. It's weird and because I kind of have I, I remember the monocle, but then I don't. I think the monocle happened because of uh, Ace Ventura Two when he had the old yeah. guy with yeah. the monocle. I, I I begin to think that that might be the reason why we think monocle. And it's also the same thing with uh, with the Star Wars thing where he doesn't say Luke, I'm your father. He yes. says No, I'm your father. And it's the same thing with the uh, Life is Like a Box of Chocolates from Forrest Gump. I, I recently learned about the Forrest Gump one. I, I, I read an article on Facebook because I'm obsessed with those like Facebook posts of like, yeah. things like X amount of things you didn't know about, blah, blah, blah. I'm well, obsessed here, with those. Here's the newest thing, and this is what's going to trip you out, and it's already started. So the day Betty White died – People magazine and a couple of Esquire and all those other like kind of famous things put mm -hmm. out she's celebrating her hundredth birthday. I, I've seen a few of those videos on TikTok. Now, when we get older, okay, ten to maybe twenty years from now, we're gonna know she did not make it to a hundred. But there's gonna be people who are younger than us and go, No, she she made it to a hundred and they'll have proof of it. Because they're going to have those magazines, and we're going to go, no, she yep. didn't make it to 100. She made it to 99. And, like, today's her birthday. So, yep. you know. Um, I knew that. But it's one of those weird things that, like, that's going to be the newest Mel uh, uh, Mandela effects. Also, people are now saying that she's the new Messiah because if they've taken her – and Bob Saget within the same year. Well, that, not the same year, uh, technically. Well, well, you know what I mean. Like, didn't she? Uh, I see. I was. This is one of the things I was going to ask my buddy James, who lives in Australia. Did she die in 2022 on his end or 2021 in our end? Uh, it was 22 on our end because it, no, it, it was, was 2021. It was like the. It was. It was. Uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, sorry because I'm I. I still kind of yeah because I remember because I had the day off so that see may, yeah. I don't I don't I don't know time zones I I'm terrible at those there is so, day ahead of us. so other people in the world are seeing did Betty White she I, she died in 22 
on actual January 1st there. Here, she died December uh, uh, 31st, 21. I'm going to, I'm going to ask my buddy later tonight. I'm, I'm going to ask him because <laughs> it, it's very curious to me. It may, it's the weirdest thing. Cause I have a friend that, that I have a couple of friends that are down there and I, I'm like, Oh, how's your Monday? And they're like, it's Tuesday. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, We're yeah, that's, what, traveling? that's what, that's what, what's weird about my buddy James is like, he's like, Oh, I'm going to bed. And it's like, I just woke up. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's so fucking funny. Well, you know that, uh, so when it's dark for us, it's full on day and it stays daytime for them longer than it is for us to be at night. Yeah. For any other country. So like anything from east of us, like, you know, Europe, Russia, Asia, um, uh, uh, Africa, like all those, like Italy, all those places, their days are different than ours. Like if you actually look at it from that, it's it's just a weird, it's a weird trip. Like I can go and do a whole conspiracy thing. Like yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy, James, right here. I okay. had an argue. I had an argument with him years back, uh, or about a year ago, on like an Instagram thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know that their money was plastic ish. I also yeah. told him that he is pronouncing Australian words incorrectly. <laughs> Uh, and he got so mad at me. I'm like, no, it's no, it's not. It's not Melbourne. It's Melbourne. He goes, are you kidding me right now? I am from this country. I'm like, no, you're saying it wrong. And it, oh, it's like that. when, for me, it's when people say Tupac instead Tupac. of Tupac. Oh god. Oh, god. Or when they, when, you'll be surprised. It it's or even when people so like I have such a weird thing when people say jalapenos instead of jalapenos jalapeno because is it a peen or is it a pen it's jalapeno there there's a pain jalapeno but when, or if i want to be a dick it's jalapeno or uh, jala, uh how did uh uh yeah jalapeno is, is which always i it's laugh acceptable it's, it's acceptable it, it it's or uh tortilla Oh, I, I always do tortilla or um, how do you say? Okay, so um, without saying it, it's a pastry that's around and it's cut in half and it has a hole in it. How do you say that word? Uh, are you talking about a bagel? Okay, so I like to purposely say or a bagel. bagel. I like to say I, bagel. I will say this though. People up here in the Pacific Northwest do not call it a bag. No. You guys call it a bag. It's 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 bagel, but I like to piss off people by saying bagel. But I'm saying, like, when you guys say bag, mm-hmm. you don't say bag, you say bag. Bag. Oh fuck. Oh shit. I didn't think about that. <laughs> See, they it that's a Pacific Northwest, that's your guys' accent. You guys say uh, you also say, uh, uh, most people say sorry instead of sorry. Sorry. The yours is a little bit more, yeah, you're a little bit more West Coast, but most people yeah. say sorry. Uh, roof. Uh, roof, yeah. Okay, creek. That's one creek. that I've, oh, fuck. Um, wait, what is the uh, carbonated beverage that comes in a can besides uh, beer? Uh, talking about soda? Okay, cool. Because I've had the argument about soda and pop. Like I can deal with soda pop, but soda, soda... pop is yeah. Soda. Well, it depends. Like if you're talking. So to me, if you're like if you go into a store and I'm like, hey, get me a soda. Typically, you'll ask, oh, what do you want? And if I say, hey, get me a fountain drink. That's a whole that's other a thing. Or Pepsi. That's a Coke yeah. or Pepsi. Yeah. But like. I, I hate the whole like argument between soda and pop. Pop is a sound. Soda is a beverage. Soda pop. That's a fucking whole. Yeah, yeah. Or if you go if you go more southern, they just say get me a coke, and uh, yeah. yep. you'll ask what coke do you want. Yep. Yep. So my uh, my, my my dad my 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 stepdad uh, he was a Pepsi drinker, but it was coke. 
it was yeah. always Coke. And um, like, oh, give me a Coke. And he was from my, the East Coast. Yeah, my mom would say, and still does, she doesn't say uh, Washington. She says Washington. 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 My wife she says, uh, grab the stuff out of the washer. Yep. So that to me is normal to me when I say that. Like, washer sounds normal, not washer. Washer is like, it sounds weird. Um, same thing with, like, she, she'll she say uh, uh, plurs instead of pliers. Uh, garage instead of garage. Um, or guitar instead of guitar. Crayon. Or guitar. Yeah, uh, crayon. 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 My, my wife says crown. My wife's from Eugene, which isn't too far. But my wife says crown. Crayon. Yeah, it, it drives me nuts. It drives so, me nuts. But it depends. So it, th- there's like the weird, like, you can say crayon. But, or, okay, here's the other one that still trips people out. Is it pecan or is it pecan? Pecan. So it's... It, it, it depends on how you were eating it. It's the same thing with supper, and it's the same thing with dinner. See, I never, I was never a supper guy. It was always dinner. So it, it, the, so you can have breakfast, lunch, supper, and then you have dinner. That actually, no, that was a thing that my, uh, my, my dad taught me. Being from the East Coast, it was always, but supper was like his, his snack. Kind of yes, it was, it, it was microwave. The, it was microwave burritos. Yeah, the mid the midday to half day, like right after work, sort of. Yeah, like yep. that supper, yep. um, and then dinner is what you have before you end the night. Um, What's a good time for dinner? Let me just. Uh, well, I grew up around six to like seven. Is is always a good time for dinner? No, but being nothing, us adult drunks with a, a life uh nine ten well, 12 o'clock <laughs> if if i'm uh if i'm doing like my nine to five every day i have dinner at like between 6 45 and 7 30 and then i'm like in bed by between like nine to ten o'clock yeah um, that you have you, you should be already be in bed you old bastard it, it's okay i'll be fine um we, we can do a little bit more and then we'll we'll end it because it's probably going on what four hours four hours yeah um and we don't even know what youtube will allow us to have i i all i know is my basic plan i only get 20 hours a month so okay. well we've already used up basically so, tw- yeah i i don't plan on going longer than an hour any other time so it's okay well, this this is a rare treat, anyways. It is. It is a rare treat because you have helped me gain that confidence to do this over and over again, even though nobody watches. But that's it, it's going to start that no one watches, and you keep it up and keep it going, like just like with the 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 beard law thing. It took years for him to get to where he's at. Yeah. So oh, yeah. you just gotta I have a I have a whole thing with him that I'm gonna do too. I, I can't wait to invite him in and see like what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> that <laughs> well, guy's a I mean, if, man. If you want me to be a part of it just every so often, oh, like no. it, it, you are gonna be like the way I'm planning it out, I have people that I want in and if you're available like so you get home about six thirty ish. Yeah. Yeah. On Mondays, like, it's usually about six six thirty. I'll eat, uh, and if you're telling me, "Hey, I need you on at like seven, and uh, and all you have to do is too is like be like, "Hey, we're having this person on." I'll ask specific questions, and if I ask a question that you're going to ask, then you can literally just like just skip over it. No, I'm I like the way I'm I'm trying to plan it out because like. If I try to do it at seven, which I'm thinking seven o'clock Mondays, cool. Yeah, it's one of those things. Like if I want to, you could pop in at any fucking time. I will send you a link, and all of a sudden I get a notification. Oh, they're stumped. Uh, but no, I'm thinking. I'm definitely thinking Mondays. Okay. And we can go from there. Um, and like I said with you, the- with you, I, I want to do a whole full on like let me downs episode. Um. Where you can just talk about that that shit, and we can talk about music, and we can 
we can get other people involved with music because I don't want to do this as a fucking uh, boring thing where I do whatever and I, I want to talk about the things that I love talking about. So yeah, well, like if we got into like cartoons and other stuff like that, and then just, oh my and god, then music. if you want to talk about cartoons, we can do a full on like six hours of this shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like we I are too old to not talk about fucking cartoons forever. There's, there's, I'll say this. There's one cartoon that I've, I've told people about, which no one remembers. Um, it was a cartoon that had the, uh, there, there were the, the basketball team that does the trick shots and, um, they had the monster Harlem trucks. Globetrotters? Yeah. The Harlem Globetrotters, but there was these monster trucks that talked and, they uh they like fight they were like fighting crime and like also doing like intergalactical stuff it was like in the early 90s sort of I thing it didn't last fucking, i you know I, what i'm I, talking I'm about pre- right i'm pretty sure me and uh jamie's husband talked about this like last year he's like how do you not know about this i'm like i don't know but i'm yeah, pretty sure we had was, this conversation he had yeah toys. it was he had fucking toys yeah, I had like in the GI Joe cartoon that no one knows about. Um, same thing with Alf. No one knows that Alf was a cartoon. Alf was a cartoon. See, see, I didn't know that. It was a comic book before it was a cartoon before it was a TV series. Wow, I didn't know that. I'm still pissed about the Alf season fucking finale. Like, I never watched the movie that came out afterwards, but I'm still pissed about that. I I just like it's I they talked about doing a reboot with uh uh with the you know to kind of go with the series and I just I was like I hope they don't like don't ruin they, they talk about reboots or everything did you ever hear about the reboot of uh you know the clock uh, a clockwork orange they 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 wouldn't be able to do it it wouldn't be it's the same thing well, like did when you they hear, did... years ago they were talking about doing that reboot with. My Chemical Romance. That actually would have been kind of cool. No, it would have been cool, but at the same time, it was at that at that phase of like their super popularity is like, oh, just don't. But just don't but do here's the thing though, it wouldn't be like it, okay. So <sighs> in our generation, we've had a lot of uh, Godzillas. We've had a lot of Peter Pans. Yep. We, oh, like, I don't know how many, you know what I'm saying? Like, we've had, like, us, our our thing is, is Hook. Hook is our Peter Pan. Yep. Now. Well, but, no, hold on. Peter Pan is my Peter Pan. Hook kind of came after my obsession with Peter Pan. But that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, it's the same thing with, like, okay, Robin Hood. What Robin Hood is your Robin Hood? Is it the Men Disney Robin Hood? Or, Men okay, types. Men types, Or is it the one with Kevin Costner? <laughs> Mine is nope. Kevin Costner. I I got in, I was at a daycare and I actually snuck out of the daycare room and went into the living room and somebody was watching the Kevin Costner Robin Hood and I actually got oh. in trouble and I was I, yeah, that, that's one of my good memories. But no, my Robin Hood is Men in Tights and then the Fox. Yeah, guy from Disney. Um, what's the other one? Um, mine is uh, uh, because there's there's another one like that too and I can't remember. Oh, Batman. Okay. Um, my Batman is Michael Keaton, but yeah. I also grew up with Adam West as my Batman. I, so, I, I did Adam West as an adult, mainly to have a something for a laugh because I yeah. knew how bad it was. So Adam West, Batman, like it was so fucking bad, but it, but was, it, it was still entertaining. As a kid, it's the most amazing thing you'll you'll have. I, Michael I, I Keaton. Was, I was into that stuff as a kid. Michael see, Keaton, yes. Yeah, Michael Keaton is my Batman. But I will have this argument. I think me and you've even said that we've had this argument too, where in between George Clooney or Val Kilmer, <laughs> and it's oh, Batman. It, it's like my thing is is like if you have to think about what what is the portrayal of Batman. It's George Clooney. Like, that's how they want him. They wanted him to look. That's why Michael Keaton worked so well because he was that, like, 
he wasn't an everyday man. He was, you know, he had that look. And, uh, but Val Kilmer did not. Val Kilmer was a playboy, yeah, but he wasn't a rich playboy. Val Kilmer was, or not Val Kilmer, uh, George Clooney was a fucking playboy. Like, but but on, I'm he saying, was like hottest man on fucking earth. But that's what I'm saying. Val Kilmer was a playboy, but he wasn't a like rich playboy. That's what I'm saying. Like it's, right. it's one of those where it's like, uh, like now people will say, okay, is it Christian Bale or is it uh, oh, Ben Affleck? God. See, I right? was never into Christian Bale or Ben Affleck Batman. But how, how Robert Pattinson as the new Batman? How how do you feel about that? I haven't seen it yet, so I don't. Ha- I don't. Well, have I've seen thing. like, like it's not. But I, I've, I've seen the trailers. I'm so I only know him as you know Edward from Twilight, and but and, you know that little Dick from Harry Potter. I'm actually really excited for. But Edward. here's here's my okay. So then here's my my thing on that. So if you then look at somebody as a certain character playing another character, you only want to see them. It's like okay, for example. Uh, uh, seeing uh, uh, Johnny Depp. When I see Johnny Depp, I see him from Elm Street. I see him from Edward Edward, Scissorhands. Edward, Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, Elm Street and um, uh, uh, they, there's another movie I can't remember the name of it, but what's well, eating uh, Gilbert Grape? Yes, that's that to me is Johnny Depp, right? But then again, his biggest role since then has been of Jack Sparrow. Yeah. So, okay, Michael Keaton, unfortunately, Batman has been his biggest, like, his biggest role has been Batman. Like, he hasn't done anything bigger since. Same thing with with Val Kilmer. Do you know of any other bigger films that Val Kilmer has done? The Doors movie, and then he died. Didn't Didn't he die? Val Kilmer? No, he's still alive. Are you sure? I thought he yeah. fucking died of like some no. weird cancer shit. No, he has cancer of the throat. And he can't talk anymore. I, I thought he fucking died. No, he's he's still alive. He just did a documentary about his life. It's called. I know, but uh, I like I saw the fucking trailer and I thought he like, it was like a death uh-uh. thing. Huh? No, he he he's oh, still no, alive. No, you're right. He's completely still alive. Oh fuck! Yeah, he's, he's still kicking. Um, like there's there's a lot of those guys from that era. That, like, to me, okay, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Is it Terminator? Terminator uh, or is he Dr. Freeze? Oh, no, no. He's, he's, uh, what's Or Mr. Name? Freeze. Uh, Sorry, not Dr. Freeze. Mr. Uh, Freeze. He's, uh, Jack Slater to me, but. Okay. Um, but you see what I'm saying? Like it, it's one of those things where like we can look back on those and be like, okay, this is our person. Like I've had this argument about like when people say, "Oh, I'm into Batman," I'm like, which one? Yeah. And it's they, like and in they, uh, what's the movie Neighbors yeah. uh, with Seth Rogen and Zac Efron talking about Zac Efron was uh, fucking Christian or what's his name. What's the fucking Dark Knight? What the fuck? I, we just Christian Bale, Christian Bale, or or Michael Keaton, or oh, Batman, or I bet like, it was a whole fucking thing. But or or okay, uh, the Joker, for example. Do you prefer the Jack Nicholson or the Heath Ledger Joker? Okay, that the Joker is a whole fucking thing that we like. So the whole thing with Joker, I always knew Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson was the fucking Joker. But let me just say that fucking um, hair lip. What is his name? Fucking. Um, oh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix did a fucking um, that that movie fucked me up. That I watched like fucked me up. I watched part of it and I got so kind of bored from it that I couldn't watch. Like I really want to watch the rest of it just to just to see really what it's Dude, about. You- the ending, the ending fucked me up. Also, let me just say, Michael Keaton's first acting role was in Mister Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah, he was the what was he? He was uh, Black and White Panda and slash Volunteer. Three episodes. He did three episodes in the seventies. He, Damn. but he was. Uh, but I remember. Well, you know, uh, 
uh, uh, what Forrest Whitaker was in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yep, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yep, as uh, which, Cowboy uh, Cowboy Pete or whatever. Yeah, which most people don't know. Of. Uh, I uh, I actually got into a whole argument about uh, the voice of the Navigator. Someone tried to tell me that that was not Paul Rubin, and I'm like, no. Look it up. Wait, no, it's the, what, the what? The what? The what? The voice of the flight with the navigator. The navigator is Paul Rubin. Shut up. <laughs> I'm about to blow your mind right now, aren't I? No, fuck you. Look Shut it up. Shut up. Let me put it. Holy shit. That's why his Pee Wee uh, Pee Wee impression is so on point. Wow. You didn't know that? Wow. No, I did not know. Now you know. You know what really fucked me up about uh, about, about Pee Wee? It wasn't it wasn't the whole, you know, thing in the, the adult theater. As I got older, I watched a Cheech and Chong movie. And he's in it. Yeah, I know. And doing drugs and shit. Yeah. It it kind of fucked me. I was like, okay. He 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 did his thing in a, a theater, whatever. Uh He's talking about drugs. And I'm a child. I'm a child still watching Pee Wee. He's talking about drugs in a one movie. Of, one of the best is his actual role in Blow, where never you don't. Blow. Oh, he's in it. I've never seen that movie. It's such a good movie. Like, and I know the, the story behind it, and um, you should watch it. It's actually a good, it's a pretty good drama. But like he's he's in it like it's yeah it's really good. But like Where's that's what I'm talking about. Like uh, what's the what's the that saying? It's like you would know somebody by what Tim Curry movie they they know him from. Tim Curry. Yeah. Pennywise. Okay. Uh, Clue. Okay. Holy shit! I I know his face in so much, and I cannot think of him. Rocky Horror Picture. Rocky, I, I I was never a Rocky Horror Picture guy. I I wasn't either, but like I Klaus, I know him as that, and I know him as um, Pennywise. Um, I right. know him as also in Lampoon's Christmas. Uh, yep, yep. Oh, uh, he was in. Um, I think he was in Home Alone two. Home Alone two. Uh, he was also in. Um, he, what was it called? It was Loaded Weapon. Uh, which was still one of my favorite roles when he's just like, he's like, where is the Macla film? Um, he, it's loaded weapon. It has, uh, um, uh, Oh, this movie blow. I know what you're fucking talking about now. Yeah. I never actually watched it, but I know the, I know the cover it's on Hulu. So I'm probably going to watch it tonight. Do you watch it? Well, I don't know if you'll watch it tonight. It's kind of long, but, um, you'll dig it. It's actually a pretty good movie. Uh, dude, I'm gonna be up for a while, so yeah. I well, I should probably go to bed. I know. Soon. I know you gotta work. At what time do you have to work? Uh, nine o'clock. But I just gotta be nine up by seven. Okay. Yeah. So how about this? How about this? We're at four hours and seventeen minutes. We're gonna we're gonna end this conversation now, and we are gonna do this again next Monday. And I'm I I have a whole plan. Um, I'm I'm trying to get Aaron. Aaron wants to do because I talked to him last week. Uh. He might want to do it tomorrow, but I'm going to try to push it to Monday. That way I can do a whole thing. But, um, yeah. Can you, pre, uh, can you pre-record it? I can't pre-record it because I'm still on the free version. I got it. Uh, I know. But I'm still – if if I have to pay $20 a month, I might have to pay $20 a month. But it is what it is. I'm going to do a whole thing where I can try to raise a few bucks and see what I can get. So, But, yeah, uh, Stump – it was good talking to you. I actually sent you a picture of me and my family with uh, Freddy Krueger, uh, and uh, I know. So uh, we're gonna end this. Oh, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit the outro, and uh, right. we're gonna do the thing. So. All right. Sweet. That was fun. So, yeah, we will talk and we'll get this set up probably for next week sometime, probably same okay. time. I'm down for it. If he if he wants to do it 